drought year when people start bailing up sloughs or ditches or maybe other areas that would be too wet in the normal year and aren't normally a managed hay field. That's when we see a lot of problems. Symptoms of weed poisoning depends on the animal, the plant ingested, and how much was ingested. You might see salivation, excitement, or even death. Call your veterinarian if you suspect the animal has eaten a toxic plant. Find more tips for avoiding poisonous weeds and hay at livingthecountrylife.com. I'll see you in the country. Living the Country Life, ideas and inspiration for your place in the country. You can find more information on today's topic, share your tips, and post photos by visiting us online at livingthecountrylife.com. From the KTUI Weatherbug Weather Center for this Friday morning, a mix of sun and clouds, the afternoon high rising to a warm 85 with a 30% chance of showers and midday thunderstorms. Tonight, partly cloudy and dry, low upper 60s with a light and variable wind. For tomorrow, the 4th of July, a mostly sunny sky, a Saturday high of 89. Clear for Saturday night, low back to 67. Sunny Sunday, highs threatening 90. For KTUI, I'm TJ Matthews. 18 minutes in front of 7 o'clock. It's 73 degrees here at the studios of KTUI. And it's time to go out across our wide Missouri. Across our wide Missouri with Bob Pretty. Listen to show archives, hear about this day in Missouri history, and learn more about the Show Me State by visiting MissouriNet.com today. As a prominent doctor in St. Louis and a highly respected man in his profession nationwide, he was heard when he called for the proper facilities to treat an insidious illness and the facilities to research the causes and handling of it. The state's first cancer treatment and research center built in Columbia is named for him now and we'll tell you his story in a minute. Okay, we are running a car drive right now to help veterans all across America. So if you have an old car, truck, or van, even a motorcycle or an RV sitting around, you can right now give it away and help the vets. They really need your help. And your car will help support the vets and their families. And guess what? You even get a tax donation. Plus, we'll even come and pick up your car for free. And all you've got to do is pick up your phone right now and make a free call. Now is the perfect time to do something good for the vets. Give back to the vets right now for all they've done for this country. And your old car can really help them. So call the Veterans Car Donation Program right now for free pickup of your vehicle. Help the vets and help your taxes at the same time. Call right now. 800-215-6812. 800-215-6812. 800-215-6812. That's 800-215-6812. Ellis Fischel won his hard battle to organize a state cancer commission when the 59th Missouri General Assembly set up that body to pick a site and provide for the building and facilities to care for medically indigent cancer patients. Ellis Fischel became known as the father of the cancer control war in Missouri. He graduated from Harvard in 1904 as a classmate of Franklin D. Roosevelt. Four years later, he completed his medical studies at Washington University, and in 1913, he set up his private practice in St. Louis. Fischel quickly established himself as an excellent doctor. Soon he was a member of the medical board of St. Louis and a member of the lay board of directors of the Barnard Free Skin Cancer Hospital. At various times he was on the staffs of Jewish, Barnes, St. Luke's, and DePaul hospitals. He followed in his father's footsteps by becoming a teacher at St. Louis and Washington Universities in the surgery. He became a member of the board of directors of the American Society for the Control of Cancer and rose to the chairman of the Committee on Cancer of the Missouri State Medical Association. Fischel quickly saw that cancer treatment was expensive, but he knew the disease knew no economic borders. So he started lobbying in Jefferson City for a state-supported cancer treatment facility. And in 1937, the legislature agreed. The governor appointed a state cancer committee to find a location for the hospital and set it up, and he named Dr. Fischel to head the committee. The legislature approved $400,000 for the building and $100,000 for equipment. Another $100,000 were provided for hospital operations in the first year. Eighteen cities offered building sites. After two months of deliberations, the board decided to put the hospital in Columbia. It became the first state-owned and operated hospital west of the Mississippi River and second in the nation, devoted exclusively to the care of medically indigent cancer patients. The building was completed in 1940 and it opened with 104 inpatient beds and an outpatient department. It was also set up to work with county cancer clinics throughout Missouri. In 1964, a major step was taken with the development of a cooperative program with a cancer research center to improve diagnosis and treatment of the disease. 
and a few years after that, the state law was changed so people with some resources could be admitted. Dr. Fischel, unfortunately, lived to know none of the flowering of his dream. In May of 1938, while on the way to a meeting of the Missouri Public Health Association in Jefferson City, Fischel's car hit a truck that was crossing the highway at Lynn, a small town east of Jefferson City. He died instantly in what a coroner's jury ruled was an unavoidable accident. He was only 54 years old. Two years later, the hospital he hoped for opened, bearing his name. Fifty years after the death of the man whose guidance created it, the Ellis Fischel State Cancer Center reported more than 10,000 clinic registrations, almost 1,000 admissions. It reported the average stay at the center had dropped from three weeks to only about eight days in the previous two decades as new methods of diagnosis and treatment techniques had been developed. In 1990, the hospital made another major advancement when it merged with the University of Missouri Health Sciences Center in Columbia. It remains a service to the people and the legacy of Dr. Ellis Fischel, the father of cancer control in Missouri, who was born on this date, the 3rd of July in 1883. That was Across Our Wide Missouri with Bob Pretty. To listen to show archives, hear about this day in Missouri history, and learn more about the Show Me State, visit MissouriNet.com. He was the lead cowboy on one of the largest ranches in the entire country, a spread that covered over 200,000 acres and a ranch with some very unique grazing ground. The story of Robbie Hunt is next on the American Countryside. Each day we take you across the nation for unique stories of America's past and present here on the American Countryside. For those interested in rural and agricultural America, we have the Farming the Countryside podcast with stories that bring you the latest information on timely topics like livestock, crops, tax and succession planning, rural improvement, ag technology, and more. Join me for Farming the Countryside, brought to you by Pivot Bio. You can hear it on the AgriTalk app, your favorite podcast platform, and you can follow our show on Facebook. Catch Farming the Countryside for a weekly look at the stories affecting rural and agricultural America. Hey, I'm Rodeo Clown J.J. Harrison. Now, if you've ever seen me in the arena, you know I like to have fun take chances. But I also take safety very seriously because rodeo clowning can be dangerous, but so can farming or ranching. Never assume location of depth of underground utilities or pipelines. Before you start work, always call 811 or visit clickbeforeyoudig.com. It only takes a minute and it can save your life. Always call 811 or visit clickbeforeyoudig.com before you start work. A message from the Pipeline Operators for Ag Safety campaign. In the early 1980s, Robbie Hind got a dream job for a cowboy the chance to manage all of the livestock of one of the nation's largest ranches, the Parker Ranch on the Big Island of Hawaii. I went from a herd of 1,500 cows and eight employees to 20,000 cows and 75 employees. Bingo. The cattle hind managed often grazed on the sides of the island's volcanoes. At one time, these cattle ate a lot of another crop once grown here. During the 20s, 30s, and 40s, they raised a lot of corn on Parker Ranch. It was all dryland farming. And it was done up in an area called Waikiki, which is up on the side of Mauna Kea. And they produced corn. And today you'll still see the corn silos that they have and corn cribs. Eventually, though, it became more economical to simply ship the calves to the corn instead of vice versa. While some cattle are processed on the islands, many are shipped to feedlots in the mainland. Ranching in Hawaii has its pros and cons. We're lucky we don't have winters. We don't have to put up hay. So that's the good news. But if we have a drought and it affects the whole island or the whole state, we just don't throw cattle in trucks and move them to another state. Hind managed the Parker Ranch herd for many years, one of the largest ranches in the country. In the early 2000s, he had a chance to take early retirement. Then I took over managing my family's ranch. I mean, after running 22,000 mother cows, yeah, I can... <laughs> 1,200 is like you know, doing my sleep. His family's ranch is at the south point of the Big Island. It is the southernmost ranch in the United States. You can hear the full story on the American Countryside podcast. Just look for it when you follow American Countryside on Facebook. Traveling the countryside in Waimea, Hawaii, I'm Andrew McCray. It's July, and it's National Hot Dog Month. I'm Julie Harker with Healthy Living on Brownfield. Eric Mittenthal is with the National Hot Dog and Sausage Council. Well, it's the 
peak of the summer grilling season from Memorial Day to Labor Day. And then the 4th of July is the single biggest hot dog consumption day of the year. So it's the perfect month to celebrate hot dogs, and we celebrate it all month long. Hot dogs need a whole month. Mittenthal says hot dogs are good for you. As with everything, you want to eat it in moderation. Don't go eating 74 hot dogs like Joey Chestnut. But if you have a hot dog once a week, uh, you're getting a great protein boost, and it's not overdoing it. And so, you know, I, I think it's a food that, that we can enjoy. It makes us happy. There's a lot to be said for the value of, of happiness in our health. And uh, at a time when we're stressed, having a food that, that delivers uh, good protein to your family that makes you happy is, is a good one. And they've been comfort food during the pandemic. We've seen basically based on hot dog sales over the last few months that people are turning to hot dogs as a food that comforts them and and feeds families. You know, people are looking for easy meal solutions right now to, to feed their families at home and hot dogs fit the bill. They're a great food. We've been celebrating Wiener Wednesday uh, throughout the past few weeks and you've heard of Taco Tuesday. People are, are looking for that easy meal solution and so Wiener Wednesday is a, a great way to, to do that and enjoy a hot dog on Wednesdays and, uh, and, and boom, your family's happy. I'm Julie Harker with Healthy Living on Brownfield. Harker with Agribusiness News on Brownfield. One in five rural Missouri children is food insecure. Missouri farmers and ranchers think this statistic is too high. Visit MoFarmersCare.com slash drive to learn more. EPA Administrator Andrew Wheeler in a conference call this week with reporters acknowledged there are a number of issues surrounding the so-called gap year small refinery exemption requests. Some of the petitions filed by oil refiners go all the way back to 2012. Wheeler says that's a problem because their renewable identification numbers or RINs have expired, which raises questions about whether or not the refiners can prove economic harm. Wheeler said EPA is waiting to see what the Department of Energy has to say about those requests. The DOE has to review them as the first step in the SRE application process. The head of the Swine Health Information Center says the recently published study about a new swine flu virus in China that could become a pandemic lacks context. Dr. Paul Sundberg tells Brownfield he talked with influenza experts in the U.S. about the study, and while they all agree it was scientifically rigorous, it was about a virus that is not new. This was a report of a specific one that they found in China in these packing plants um, from 2011 to 2018, and they were giving a report of it. Sundberg says the study does not indicate the level of risk of the G4 strain of H1N1. And there really isn't any indication from the, from the paper, from the information in the paper, that this is any higher risk or lower risk than any other influenza virus that's out in any pig population. Sundberg says there is no evidence of the virus in the U.S. pig population. The United States Cattlemen's Association, National Farmers Union, and 11 other groups are calling for a Senate Ag Committee hearing on reauthorization of livestock mandatory price reporting. The current rule expires at the end of September, and the groups say that presents an opportunity to make meaningful changes to the program to increase transparency and true price discovery. The group sent a letter to the committee request that all available solutions be considered to address depressed livestock prices and increase consolidation in the cattle industry. They warn that time is running out to develop an effective reauthorization of the program. Livestock and competitive exhibit entries are now being accepted by the 2020 Missouri State Fair. The Missouri Department of Agriculture says most entries will be accepted online through the premium guide and some will be accepted by paper entry available at the fair's website. For a link, go to brownfieldagnews.com. No open show livestock premiums will be offered because of budget restrictions. Premiums will be paid for 4-H and FFA junior livestock show placings. Standard entry fees will still apply. I'm Julie Harker, Brownfield Ag News for America. What is hope? Hope to me was just that he would get to come home. I had no idea how hard it would be once he got back. I wish she'd stop drinking so much. She thinks it's helping, but it's not. I act like I don't care if he comes to my games, but I hope he does. I hoped he'd get help. He told me to stop asking. I didn't. Then one day he asked for a ride. Hope is knowing there are other families just like yours, that the veterans they love got help and recovered. Go to maketheconnection.net and turn hope into action.
Every growing season brings challenges. 2020 took things to a whole new level. Do what needs to be done. Work with the trusted experts at Nutrient Ag Solutions. From weed and disease control to advanced nutrients, Nutrient Ag Solutions has the products to help maintain plant health throughout the growing season. Loveland products, as well as trusted partners, including BASF and Syngenta, can take your plant health program to the next level. For healthy and profitable results, talk to your local crop consultant or visit NutrientAgSolutions.com. If you're trying to quit drinking or doing too many drugs, listen to me. You don't know me and we'll never meet. I had a problem like you once. I drank and used to party a little too much till it got out of control and almost ruined my life. I realized I needed help to fix my problem before it totally destroyed me. If you've tried to fix your drinking and drug problem and you know you can't do it alone, you need to call the National Treatment Advisors. They'll immerse you into a 30-day program to replace your old habits with new habits and totally change your life. And if you have PPO, private health insurance, the entire program may be covered. Fix your problem right now before it gets any worse. Get clean. Call now and learn more. 877-247-1585-877-247-1585. Soybeans and corn are lower. Hogs are mixed. Cattle are higher. I'm John Perkins with a Brownfield Market Update. Stein celebrating 40 years of superior genetics, thanking their growers and employees for their loyal support and for choosing Stein because Stein has yield. Soybeans and corn are down modestly on profit taking. July beans are two and three quarters lower at 891. November's down two and a half at 896 and a half. July corn's two and three quarters lower at 345 and a half. December's down four and a quarter at 356 and a quarter. Live and feeder cattle are up, supported by technical buying. Feeders are getting additional support from the lower corn. August lives up 187 at 9917. October's a dollar ninety higher at 10257. August feeders are up 202 at 13510. And adjusting spreads. July hogs are down two at 4477. August is up 12 at 4920. Follow us on Twitter at Brownfield. John Perkins, Brownfield. 74 degrees here at the studios of KTUI. It's two minutes in front of 7 o'clock. And the uh, Focus on the Family Minute is brought to you on Fridays by the folks at Merrimack Caverns. When's the last time you were down at Merrimack Caverns? Well, if you haven't been in a while, why don't you go back? The entire cave is now open, and they're waiting to serve you at Merrimack Caverns. So take the family down. If the family hasn't been, if you've got people coming from out of town, it's a great place to visit. Merrimack Caverns in Stanton, Missouri. Don't forget they've got the zip line, boat rides, camping. It's all there at the cave. Merrimack Caverns, Stanton, Missouri. Be sure to head that way soon. We have adopted since the 60s a kind of anti-American narrative, an anti-heroic narrative. If you hear about George Washington, instead of hearing about the infinity of heroic things he did, you hear, oh, he was a slave owner. Our culture today may not look so favorably on the founding fathers, but in losing that positive side of history, we're losing some pride in our nation and how this country came to be. Here's Eric Metaxas on Focus on the Family Minute. We have done a profound disservice to this generation and even to our generation, us growing up in the 70s or whatever, that we have not taught these things. If, if you have a couple of generations that doesn't understand this stuff and that is not living it out, that is, I'm not being hyperbolic, that is the end of America and we have not been doing this and we need to get very busy. Share the stories of American heroes with your children and give them a sense of pride in their country. More from Eric today at FamilyMinute.org. Brought to you on Fridays by the folks at Merrimack Caverns in Stanton. Happy birthday to Gary Johanning, Mike Hoffman, Abby Klontz, Ray Schoenveld, Sandy Stegman, David Saltzman, and Becky Lawrence. Tomorrow, Henry Harms has a birthday along with our nation. Uh, Sunday, Julie Landwehr, Jackie Thompson, Doyle Stack, Heather Baus, Ethan Sellers, and Chad Leak. And a happy anniversary today to Dean and Mike Hollis. They're celebrating their 73rd. We are AM 1560, KTUI Sullivan, 94.1 FM. You can pick us up on TuneIn and YouTube Live News at 7. Brought to you by Sullivan Bank. The former girlfriend of the late disgraced financier Jeffrey Epstein is facing six counts related to her allegedly helping him sexually abuse young girls.
at least one who is as young as 14. Epstein accuser Jennifer Oroas welcoming the news, saying on NBC this morning. This arrest probably, I think, represents, you know, a new, a completely new beginning, you know, for justice for all the survivors. The nation's top infectious disease expert, Dr. Anthony Fauci, says COVID-19 may be mutating to help it spread more easily. Fauci saying yesterday researchers are working to confirm the possible mutation and what it actually means when it comes to the pandemic. And you're listening to USA Radio News. When thinking about life insurance, my accident reinforced you never know what tomorrow might bring. That's why I reached out to AccuQuote. AccuQuote helps people find a life insurance policy that meets their needs. Since 1986, they've helped millions of folks save up to 60% on their life insurance by comparing the rates and features of dozens of top-rated life insurance products. A healthy 50-year-old non-smoker can buy a half a million dollars of 10-year level term for less than 45 bucks a month. A 60-year-old under 120 bucks a month. Longer or permanent terms are available. Even if you already own life insurance, you really need to check out my friends at AccuQuote. Don't worry about health issues. Remember, they help me. As a pastor, I'm concerned about your soul and helping you to make sure your family is taken care of. Life insurance is more affordable now than ever, so don't make them wish you'd made that call. 877-437-4781. Call now, 877-437-4781. 877-437-4781. Each policy forms and availability vary by state. China says it will take all necessary countermeasures, in its words, if the U.S. moves ahead with a Hong Kong sanctions bill. That warning from early today, coming after the U.S. Senate approved the Hong Kong Autonomy Act, sending it to President Trump for his signature, the bill punishing banks that do business with Chinese officials who implement harsh new security laws on Hong Kong. A Chinese foreign affairs spokesman saying the bill has grossly interfered in China's internal affairs and seriously violates international law. SAG-AFTRA is telling actors not to work on Michael Bay's next film. The union issuing a do-not-work order for Bay's upcoming pandemic thriller Songbird. The order reportedly issued because the company did not complete a signatory process with the union for that film. And this is USA Radio News. While you have free time and you're sitting at home and you ponder what kind of gifts to buy for someone, PatriotDepot.com has you covered from puzzles, games, novelty items. If you're looking for some unique style items when it comes to the president, for more, you can check out PatriotDepot.com. Call 844-377-8052. That's 844-377-8052. Or PatriotDepot.com. Use promo code USA. For the first time in decades, more Americans are likely to see more immigration. The latest Gallup poll finding that 34% of Americans surveyed would like to see immigration increase, while 28% would like to see it drop. 36% say they think immigration should stay at the current levels. It's the first time, though, since 1965 that Gallup has shown people wanting more immigration outnumbering those backing a drop in immigration. Well, there are some very strange parties taking place in Alabama, and USA Radio's John Hunt explains. City officials in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, are warning that several students are throwing coronavirus parties where people who have the virus are invited to intentionally infect others. The Tuscaloosa Fire Chief Randy Smith said at a city council hearing that these parties have now been happening for several weeks. They said they thought it was a rumor at first and did research and confirmed that doctors had the same information. The state's Department of Public Health said in a statement that anyone who is in violation of the governor's health order faces misdemeanors and fines. A city councilor said that money is collected at the parties and whoever gets the coronavirus first wins the cash. This is USA Radio News. Remember, you can find us online anytime. We're at usaradio.com. That's usaradio.com. And for USA Radio News, I'm Chris Barnes.
Well, if you're like most of us, the most important thing in our world is our children. And Missouri Baptist Hospital recognizes that. Whether you have a new one on the way or children that you need taken care of during their lifetime, Missouri Baptist Hospital provides the services with their pediatrician, Dr. Sarah Pauley, their nurse practitioner, Sarah McKee, and their OBGYN doctors, Dr. Rimbecki and Dr. Baker. Missouri Baptist Hospital's OBGYN and pediatric team provides the care you need for you and your children. When you're looking for the best possible care for your children close to home, then you need to select the BJC Medical Group of Sullivan. The Sullivan Medical Office is located conveniently right there at Missouri Baptist Hospital in Sullivan. For an appointment with one of their OBGYNs or their pediatrician, call today 573-860-6000. Exceptional OBGYN and pediatric care close to home. Missouri Baptist Hospital of Sullivan. This is news on Missouri Net. I'm Bill Wise. Kansas City police say an officer was shot and critically wounded yesterday while responding to a reported disturbance. Witnesses say a man left a fast food restaurant around 4.30 with a gun and he was shooting. The suspect turned and fired shots towards officers, striking one Kansas City police officer. The other officers returned fire, striking the suspect. The suspect died at the scene. The police officer shot in the head was taken to the hospital for surgery where he was reported in critical condition. This was the second officer shot in Kansas City yesterday. In a separate incident, an officer received a minor wound on a bus earlier in the day. There will be an outside review of the St. Louis Metropolitan Police Department. St. Louis Mayor Lida Cruson announced the privately funded review during a Facebook Live broadcast. Cruson said the review will cover several categories, including gun violence. It's about acknowledging that black lives matter, but it's also about acknowledging that in St. Louis, far too many black lives are lost to violence. Gun violence is devastating our community. Retired Philadelphia Police Commissioner Chuck Ramsey will be leading the review. Ramsey is a nationally known policing consultant. Reporting in St. Louis, Jill Enders. St. Joseph tourism already mired in a very tough year absorbed a big blow when the Kansas City Chiefs made it official by announcing they will not hold a training camp in St. Joseph this year. The NFL ruled all teams must hold camp at their own facilities due to COVID-19. Executive Director Marcy Bennett with the St. Joseph Convention and Visitors Bureau in northwestern Missouri says the cancellation of training camp this year is disappointing. A huge disappointment, especially coming off the year that they had last year. Um, I think everybody was anticipating even larger crowds this year. And uh, so it is very disappointing, but somewhat understandable. You're listening to news on Missouri Net. Hi, I'm Dr. Shelley Place with today's tip for kids from the American Academy of Pediatrics. Kids are full of energy, but keeping them active in their teen years can be a challenge. Aim for an hour of physical activity every day. If they like sports, that's a great place to start. Keep the focus on fun, not winning, and encourage your child to do a variety of activities. If your child isn't meeting that 60-minute goal, gradually increase their activity in ways they enjoy. For more, talk with your pediatrician or visit HealthyChildren.org. This summer, there are a lot of bad decisions you can make. Ah! Sunbox for wimps! Ah, more lighter fluid! Ah! Hey, we're out of ice! You get it! You're okay to drive! But the bad decision to drive high or buzzed could land you behind bars. And I'm not paying your fines! <laughs> Don't let one bad decision define you. Never drive impaired. Remember, if you feel different, you drive different. This message is brought to you by the Missouri Coalition for Roadway Safety. You're listening to news on Missouri Nat. Required job hunting begins again next week for Missourians out of work. Work search activities will be required of anyone on regular unemployment. The Pandemic Unemployment Assistance Program, Extended Benefits, and the Pandemic Emergency Unemployment Compensation Program. The mandate had been suspended for those who had filed a coronavirus-related unemployment claim. Unemployed individuals will be required to do three work searches per week. Elisa Nelson, Missouri Net. And Silver Dollar City near Branson is reporting that employees have tested positive for COVID-19 since the park reopened on June 13th. The Stone County Health Department confirms that six employees at Silver Dollar City have tested positive for COVID-19. The health department says this is currently being investigated as a possible outbreak. All employees were masked while at the park and have been quarantined at home. Close contacts of the employees, including co-workers, have also been quarantined. 
You're listening to the latest news on Missouri. Sullivan Bank is celebrating its 125th anniversary. Hello, this is Debbie Durham with Sullivan Bank. This year, we are grateful to celebrate this milestone and our employees that always give us step up in service. We still hold the same commitment to our customers while retaining the mix of services, resources, and familiar faces you know and trust. From personal banking to business and mortgage lending, Sullivan Bank, we look forward to serving you for years to come. Market declines, unemployment, oil prices, today's headlines can be scary. Hi, I'm Edward Jones Financial Advisor Donnie Greenwald. I'll work with you to help you understand the impact of short-term events and how to be positioned for the long term. We provide the tools for a reasoned, disciplined approach to investing. Don't let headlines derail your long-term financial strategy. Stop by our office at number 10 First Community Plaza for a face-to-face appointment. Edward Jones, Making Sense of Investing, member SIPC. Colonel Eric T. Olson, the superintendent of the Missouri State Highway Patrol, encourages Missouri's travelers to make smart choices for a safe July 4th holiday. The state's wide variety of recreational opportunities are a great way to celebrate our nation's freedoms. But no matter what you plan for the long weekend, if you can't go wrong if you choose to follow all Missouri traffic and boating laws. It is also important to observe social distancing and other CDC guidelines related to the coronavirus and stay home if you are ill. During the 2019 counting period, 15 people were killed and 457 injured in Missouri over the holiday in 1,109 traffic crashes. Over the 2019 July 4th holiday, troopers arrested 162 people for driving while intoxicated. In 2019, there were nine boating crashes, which included four injuries, no fatalities. Three people drowned during last year's July 4th holiday. Troopers made 13 boating while intoxicated arrests in 2019. The 2020 counting period for the July 4th holiday will be from 6 p.m. today until 11.59 p.m. on Sunday. The Highway Patrol will be participating in Operation CARE, which is Crash Awareness and Reduction Effort, and Operation Dry Water over the July 4th holiday weekend. Operation Dry Water specifically targets impaired vessel operators. All available troopers will be patrolling Missouri roadways and waterways to enforce traffic and boating laws and offering assistance as needed. You can always contact the Highway Patrol on your cell phone with Star 55. The Highway Patrol made an arrest in Phelps County at 11.53 last night. 34-year-old Rachel K. Skaggs of Rolla was arrested on DWI first. Failure to drive on the right half of the roadway, she was booked and released. At 10.59 last night in Crawford County, 37-year-old Amanda E. Jondrow of Steelville was arrested on felony possession of a controlled substance, methamphetamine, felony possession of controlled substance, Xanax, Felony warrant out of Dent County for the Sheriff's Office for possession of amphetamine and burglary forced entry. She was taken to the Crawford County Jail and held without bond. There was an arrest at 7.03 last night in Phelps County. 29-year-old Madeline I. Willhauer of Taylorville, Illinois, was arrested on felony possession of a controlled substance, ecstasy, unlawful possession of marijuana under 10 grams, possession of drug paraphernalia, and speeding. She was taken to the Phelps County Jail and later released. Another arrest at 7.03 p.m. in Phelps County. 27-year-old Stacy L. Scott of Stonington, Illinois, was arrested for felony possession of a controlled substance, ecstasy, unlawful possession of marijuana under 10 grams. She was taken to the Phelps County Jail and later released. And an arrest yesterday in Franklin County. 21-year-old Brianna L. Sloan of Joplin Arrested on a patrol charge, two counts, felony possession of controlled substance, one gram of cocaine and one gram of methamphetamine, misdemeanor possession of marijuana, 20 grams. She was taken to the St. Clair Police Department and released. The Franklin County Presiding Commissioner, Tim Brinker, addressed some inquiries regarding masks and whether the Franklin County Commission plans to impose a mask requirement. At this time, the commission is not considering a mandatory mask rule but they will continue to support the choice of the individual to keep themselves and others as safe as possible. Franklin County currently has 35 active cases of COVID-19, 16 in skilled nursing care, and 19 who reside elsewhere in the county. There were four new positive test results reported yesterday, a 17-year-old male from Union, a 38-year-old male from Union, a 17-year-old female from Catawissa, and a 64-year-old female from Villa Ridge. 
The total number of confirmed cases since the beginning of the pandemic is now at 210. There have been two additional recoveries, a 42-year-old woman from Washington and a 64-year-old man from Gerald. Total recoveries to date, 157, and fatalities in Franklin County are at 18. The Franklin County Health Department is announcing a public health alert due to a possible COVID-19 community exposure. Prior to being diagnosed, a COVID-19 positive person attended the Loomis Brothers Circus in Sullivan on June 26th. The case was infectious at the time, but not symptomatic. The Crawford County Health Department has issued a COVID-19 health alert. Individuals at these locations on these dates are at low risk for contracting COVID-19, but should monitor for symptoms. On the 25th of June, Sullivan Walmart after 3 p.m. On the 26th at the Sullivan Walmart after 3 p.m. and at Mesa's Supermarket in Cuba. On the 27th, Cuba Walmart approximately 4 to 5 p.m. and Cuba Casey's between 4 and 5 p.m. On the 29th at Bourbon Town and Country in the afternoon and Bourbon Dollar General in the afternoon, Cuba Walmart in the afternoon. These locations are for more than one case. If you have spoken to a nurse from the Crawford County Health Department, you were already informed of your risk to this patient. That brings the total for confirmed cases in Crawford County to 15. A Washington County resident who tested positive for COVID-19 attended the Potosi High School graduation on June 27th. Officials are warning of possible community exposure. According to Washington County, the Potosi R3 School District has been notified and working closely with the health department to notify the public. Close contacts have been notified by the health department. Any person who attended the event should monitor themselves for symptoms through July 11th. Washington's numbers are 9 active, 19 recovered, 1 death. The offices of Merrimack Regional Planning Commission, or MRPC, and the Phelps County PHA are now open. The Phelps County PHA is seeing clients by appointment only. Appointments can be made by calling 573-265-4200. Drop-in visits are discouraged. Social distancing and the use of masks and hand sanitizers is encouraged during visits. Individuals who have any flu-like symptoms or have been in contact with anyone who has had flu-like symptoms or has tested positive for COVID-19 within the past 14 days are required to reschedule their appointments. Housing applications are available at phelpsco.housingmanager.com or in paper form in the box to the right of the Phelps County PHA entrance. Completed applications and other paperwork can be left in the locked drop box to the left of the housing entrance. The Sullivan City Council will be meeting in regular session on Tuesday, July 7th at 7 p.m. in the Council Chambers at 210 West Washington. The call to order will come at 7 o'clock under requests and petitions. Kathy Birdeye from uh, Manion Street there in regards to nuisances and Temple Baptist Church uh, having a family night and they're asking for a temporary street closure of Beeman Street on the 9th of July from 5.30 to 7.30. They do have real estate litigation and personnel scheduled for closed session. The Cuba Knights of Columbus having their annual 4th of July barbecue at Mesa's parking lot in Cuba. That will be going on today and tomorrow from 10 a.m. till 6 p.m. each day. The Crawford County Youth in Ag Show and Sale going on July 10th and 11th at the Interstate Regional Stockyards in Cuba. KTUI will be broadcasting the livestock auction at 2 p.m. on Saturday, July 11th. The Franklin County Government Center, the Judicial Center, the Historic Courthouse, the Highway Department, and the Health Department are all closed today in observance of the Independence Day holiday. Franklin County Sheriff's Department, of course, is open as they are 24 hours a day each and every day. Jost Tire and Bourbon Tire and Lube are open to serve our communities during this difficult time of COVID-19 pandemic. It is our priority to take the health and safety of those customers and our employees seriously during this time. We have modified our store hygiene protocol and cleaning policies in our office and while working with customer vehicles. Jost Tire and Bourbon Tire and Lube are open with normal business hours for those in need of services. Visit Jost Tire Company in Owensville or Bourbon Tire and Lube in Bourbon for all of your tire needs. The results are in. 100% of friends and family surveyed in a recent Miner survey recommended Dunsford Court as a great place to live. Loved ones are treated with respect and love. 
Community and outside activities encourage independence and socialization, and Dunsford Court provides delicious meals, upscale dining, and an award-winning care staff. Visit Dunsford Court at 775 Dunsford Drive in Sullivan. Your loved ones are their loved ones every day, all the time. Call 468-2600 for more information. In recent funeral notices, Lola Johnson, a banderman of St. Clair, passed away Saturday at the age of 86. Funeral services will be held at 11 o'clock this morning at the Prospect Baptist Church in Lonedale. Burial will be in the Mount Hope Cemetery in Lonedale. Visitation for Lola will be from 10 o'clock this morning until the time of services at 11 at the Prospect Baptist Church. Memorials may be made to Prospect Baptist Church in Lonedale. Condolences may be sent to the family through the website russellcolonialfuneralhome.com. Carl Holstrew of St. James passed away Sunday at the age of 82. Funeral services will be held Saturday at 11 a.m. at Gottenstrader Chapel in Owensville. Burial will be in the Countryside Memorial Gardens with full military honors. Visitation for Carl Holstrew will be held Saturday from 9 to 11 a.m at the Gottenstrader Chapel in Owensville. The complete funeral announcements with all the survivors will air with our 8 o'clock expanded edition of KTUI News this morning. Many families make photographs a part of a funeral remembrance to capture the memories of a lifetime of love. The sadness of losing mom is overwhelming, but seeing those photographs was a tribute to her lifetime of love. We serve every need within every budget. Holiness. Don and Lisa Mizell. Mizell Funeral Home, Cuba. Goldwell Banker, Reeves Realtors, and Sullivan is an honest, professional, and friendly real estate agency with an A-plus rating from the Better Business Bureau. Whether you're buying or selling, the experienced agents with Coldwell Banker, Reeves Realtors, will help guide you through this difficult process. Rachel Shoemaker and her agents use the latest technology like CirclePix Marketing, Facebook, and other social media. If you're looking for a full or part-time career, contact Rachel to find out how you can become an agent. A vital part of our community, Coldwell Banker, Reeves Realtors of Sullivan. From the KTUI Weatherbug Weather Center for this Friday morning, a mix of sun and clouds, the afternoon high rising to a warm 85, with a 30% chance of showers and midday thunderstorms. Tonight, partly cloudy and dry, low upper 60s with a light and variable wind. For tomorrow, the 4th of July, a mostly sunny sky, a Saturday high of 89. Clear for Saturday night, low back to 67. Sunny Sunday, highs threatening 90. For KTUI, I'm TJ Matthews. It's 23 minutes past the hour of 7 o'clock, 75 degrees here at the studios of KTUI. Some birthdays today. Gary jo Johanning, if I could say the name, Gary Johanning lives across the street from me. Uh, Mike Hoffman, uh, Sullivan Bank president. Um, Abby Klontz, Ray Schoenveld, Sandy Stegman, David Saltzman, uh, Becky Lawrence. Those are the birthdays for today. Tomorrow, Henry Harms has a birthday along with uh, the uh, United States of America. And uh, Julie Landwehr, Jackie Thompson, Doyle Stack, Heather Bouse, Ethan Sellers, and Chad Leak all have birthdays on Sunday. There's an anniversary today. Dean and Mike Hollis are celebrating their 73rd wedding anniversary. So happy anniversary to them. Bobby D's got sports coming up for you right after you hear this from Randy Mack. Randy Mack Heating and Cooling LLC has been serving the area for 35 years. They do new installations, replacements, upgrades, humidifiers, air cleaners, service, custom-made ductwork, preventative maintenance schedules. You can call now to get your system checked out for summer. Randy Mack also does geothermal. Financing is available. Call Randy Mack today at 468-4927. That's 468-4927 for Randy Mack Heating and Cooling, LLC. From the Cardinals Classic Series and the Cardinals Radio Network last night, Cardinals beat the Dodgers 4-2 in Game 4 of the 2013 National League Championship Series. Game 6 of that series coming up tonight at 6.15. You'll hear it on 102.1 KTUI-FM and on the TuneIn app. If the Blues successfully defend their Stanley Cup, it looks like it's going to be on Canadian soil. Although nothing has been made official, multiple reports on Wednesday indicated that the National Hockey League has decided on Edmonton and Toronto as its hub cities for its expected return to play in early August. Under the 2014 postseason 
season format. The 12 Western Conference teams, the Blues included, are expected to play in Edmonton. The 12 Eastern Conference teams will gather in Toronto. All along, the league seemed intent on placing one hub city in Canada and another in the United States, namely Las Vegas. But you can blame the coronavirus, the league steering clear of the U.S. entirely, particularly because of a spike in cases in Las Vegas. Besides selecting hub cities, the NHL's attempt to resume hockey also hinges on health and safety protocols for Phase 3 training camp and for Phase 4 postseason play, plus agreeing on a new collective bargaining agreement. There was enough progress there in a marathon negotiating session Tuesday night into Wednesday that it was reported a deal could be finalized over the next couple of days with separate ratification votes by the NHL Players Association and the NHL's Board of Governors representing all 31 teams coming by the end of the weekend. Blues GM Doug Arnold. Armstrong had no comment on the negotiations, but he did say on thir- Wednesday that two-thirds of the team is in St. Louis and the full squad is expected to be on hand by the middle of next week to begin training camp. The Show Me State games will go on this summer with opening ceremonies beginning July 17th in Columbia. The games will last two weekends, July 17th through 19th and 24th through 26th, and feature most of the usual events. The first weekend will include baseball and softball. Baseball and softball registration must be completed by July 7th. Volleyball registration will also be due by July 7th. Golfers will compete July 17th through 19th at AL Justin Golf Course in Columbia. Registration for golf must be completed by July 8th. Shooting events will also be held that first weekend. Muzzle shooting registration is due by July 14th, while registration for other shooting events is due on the 13th. Cycling events will be held on the 18th and 19th, with registration must be completed by July 14th. Events that will be held off until 2021 include swimming, wrestling, martial arts, track and field, powerlifting, handball, rugby, judo, ice hockey, gymnastics, football, and fencing. Former Missouri Tiger defensive tackle and Cleveland Browns 2020 third round draft choice Jordan Elliott signed his rookie contract on Thursday. Elliott was chosen 88th overall by Cleveland, played two seasons for Mizzou, recording 44 tackles, including two and a half sacks and eight and a half tackles for loss in his redshirt junior season last year. A Missouri City, Texas native, he transferred to Mizzou after playing one season for Texas. He was named to the All-SEC First Team and Second Team All-American by the Associated Press in 2019. Five former Missouri Tigers will join the Mizzou Intercollegiate Athletics Hall of Fame in 2020, which will be the 30th class in the Hall's inception. Chidi Imhall, Kirsten Peoples, Mike Rogers, Nancy Rudder, and Don Smith are the five who will be formally inducted into the Hall of Fame on September 25th. They will also be honored at Missouri's football game against Eastern Michigan the following day. Imo competed in men's track and field from 1983 to 86, winning seven NCAA All-American honors and 11 conference championship gold medals in his time as a Tiger. Peoples competed in women's track and field from 2012 to 15 and was a 10-time All-American in indoor-outdoor weight throw, shot put, discus, and hammer throw. Rogers was a St. Louis native who holds the second-best batting average in Mizzou baseball program history. He also holds the school's slugging percentage record and previously held the program's home run record until it was broken in 2008. Rudder was a founding member of Missouri's women's basketball inaugural 1974-75 recruiting class. She holds four top ten program finishes, including free throws made, rebounds per game, total points scored, and career points per game. Ann Smith was an acclaimed shot putter who finished number two at the NCAA 1961 Outdoor Championships and also won shot put titles at three different relay events during the 1962 season. Locally, the Sullivan AAA COVID-19 Summer League baseball team will be off over the holiday weekend Next game's scheduled for Thursday, July 9th, as they will host Steelville at Campbell Field, Sunny Jim Bottomley Park. Six and eight o'clock are game times. Those games aired on 94.1 FM. Uh, last report, they will try to make up the doubleheader against Herman that was rained out on Wednesday. Activities and athletics can resume at Sullivan High School on Monday, July 6th. Everyone who participates after that date must sign a release of liability waiver before participating. You can download that waiver on the homepage of the athletics website at SullivanAthletics.com. Sullivan Sports Boosters Annual Golf Tournament, sponsored by Sullivan Bank, coming up Friday, August 7th at Sullivan Golf Course. Tournament will be held rain or shine. Registration at 9, tee off at 10. Cost is $250 per team for the three-person scramble tournament. Lots of prizes awarded, food available throughout the day, and there's a dinner after the tournament. Several sponsorship opportunities are also available. All proceeds will benefit Sullivan High School athletic programs. If you'd like to get signed up or have any questions, contact Natalie Counts at Missouri Baptist Sullivan Hospital. 573 
1-800-668-5619. Sports on the air tonight. It's Cardinals baseball in the Cardinals Classic Series as they take on the L.A. Dodgers in Game 6 of the 2013 National League Championship Series. 6-15 is game time. You'll hear tonight on 102.1 KTUI-FM and on the TuneIn app at KTUI-FM. That is your look at sports on this Friday. This is Bobby D. Hi, my name is Tyler Garner, loan officer at First State Community Bank in Sullivan. Whether you're looking for a home or building a new one, it's good to have options. That's why our team at First State Community Bank offers flexible options to fit your specific needs. See our team for financing that includes construction loans, fixed rate mortgages, homes with acreage, lot and acreage loans, refinancing, and pre-qualification. Come see me, Tyler, at FSCB in Sullivan today, and I'll work to find the right solution for you. FSCB is an equal housing lender and member FDIC. It is 7.30 here at the studios of KTUI. We have 75 degrees. I'm Sam Scott. Glad to have you along on uh, the beginning of this holiday weekend. And uh, Bobby D's along with me from uh, his studio in uh, St. James. Good morning, Bob. Good morning, Sam. Good morning, everybody. And uh, so uh, quite a few birthdays today. Gary Johanning lives right across the street from me. Uh, Mike Hoffman, president of Sullivan Bank, Gabby Klontz, Ray Schoenveld, Sandy Stegman, David Saltzman, had lunch with him the other day, um, Becky Lawrence, and uh, then tomorrow, uh, Henry Harms has a birthday on 4th of July. Um, Sunday, Julie Landwehr, Jackie Thompson, Doyle Stack, Heather Baus, Ethan Sellers, and Chad Leak, and Dean and Mike Hollis, are celebrating their 73rd wedding anniversary today. Congratulations to uh, Dean and Mike, and happy anniversary. So, um, they had a, it looked to me like they had a pretty nice uh, uh, fireworks display here in Sullivan last night at the fairgrounds. Um, I actually was asleep, but uh, I saw uh, some of it on Facebook this morning, and it looked like it was a pretty good display. So I'm not really even sure. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, we I, had uh, we had a pretty good fireworks display about uh, quarter four this morning. Really? Uh, we had a we had a good storm move through here. Uh, oh, the lightning and stuff. Yeah, that was oh, going. Yeah. yeah, I stepped out of the house about I don't know. I guess it was about ten after four this morning. And first thing that I noticed was that you know the I guess with the humidity up, it was very you know kind of warm. And uh, uh, I stepped out and I was like, whoa. <laughs> So, and then on, on my way to work, I uh, noticed several um, brilliant displays of lightning. Yeah, we had uh, heavy downpour rain, a lot of, lot of right, lightning and thunder. And went on quite the show. Uh, I, I'm normally a pretty sound sleeper, and it woke me up. Well, uh, power flashed off for just a second, so probably a good thing I was awake or my <laughs> alarm may not have gone off. Who knows? But, uh, yeah. It uh, seems to have stopped by right now. Uh, it, was a, it was a boomer this morning. Yep. So, um, let's see. Um, so, here's a name that I'm sure you've heard before. Hydroxychloroquine. Uh, yeah. The, uh, wasn't the president uh, taking some of that? Yeah. So, they, you know, there were places, news agencies and people, you know, Making fun of the the president, there were people. Of course, now I have to. If I if I remember correctly, he was uh, um, taking it as a preventative measure, and I'm not really sure that that was good. But I mean, I mean, there's you know, there's all kinds yeah. of there's all kinds of things to be. And there were other people that were mad that he was taking it, you know, and so very he, upset. Yeah. So so here. Uh, hydroxychloroquine, it's the anti-malaria drug that uh, also used to treat lupus. Uh, President Trump says he uh, took it to prevent COVID-19. Now the medical team at Henry Ford Hospital is weighing in. Back in March, when Metro Detroit was, seeking, was seeing uh, peak numbers of coronavirus, Henry Ford Hospital initiated a study on its first 2,500 COVID-19 patients. And uh, this is in quotes now. It says, what we found is that of those patients treated with hydroxychloroquine, there was a 13% overall mortality rate. In patients that were not treated with hydroxychloroquine, there was a 26% mortality. So double, double the amount of people, yeah. you know. Uh, this was according to Dr. Stephen Kalkanis, the CEO of the Henry Ford Medical Group. 
We felt it was important to release to the world for potential treatment reasons our results here, said Dr. Marcus Zervos, the division head of infectious disease for Henry Ford. The uh, patients included in the study, which wrapped up in May, were very sick and had underlying medical issues, but doctors also found that when the drug was administered to those patients, it played a key part in survival rates. For hydroxychloroquine to have a benefit, it needs to be given before the patient suffers some of the severe immune reaction that can occur with COVID, Dr. Kalkanis said. So how does this uh, drug work in the treatment of COVID-19? The mechanism of action is that it inhibits the virus from getting in the cell, but also inhibits the in inflammation response. These medical experts do not recommend using this drug outside of a hospital setting, and they admit that more research is needed on its use in treating COVID-19, but they do see that this research is a key step in moving forward and decreasing the death rate. These are critical, important results to add to the mix of how we move forward if there is a second surge and relevant for other parts of the world, how we can help people combat the disease, uh, said Dr. Zervos. So, so. Well, I, I think that just goes kind of to reinforce some of the things we'd heard initially that, again, like a lot of uh, medicines, it helped some people and, and didn't, but didn't help everybody. Right. Yeah. You so, know, you, and you see that, you see that in, cancer drugs and, and, you know, various sure. different medications. It's, you know, there's some people that it did help, uh, just, and, you know, it's hard to pin down what the factors are that where it made a difference in those people as opposed to others. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm for trying anything that, that might help somebody out. So right. maybe the president, uh, you know, knew more than people thought he did. <laughs> Maybe, maybe, um, maybe, um, uh, with a capital M. Yeah. So, uh, Walmart is uh, converting some of its parking lots into drive-in theaters for the summer. As I the saw that. Yeah. The movie industry struggles amid the co coronavirus pandemic. The retail behemoth is converting 160 of its parking lots across the U.S. into drive-ins. These theaters will open in early August and remain open through October. The Walmart drive-in will feature movies programmed by Tribeca Enterprises, the company behind the Tribeca Film Festival, which recently launched a summer movie drive-in series, bringing films, music, and sporting events to as many U.S. drive-ins as possible. Walmart has not disclosed whether attendees will have to pay a price of admission, though ahead of each drive-in screening, Walmart says it will sell concessions for moviegoers, which they uh, can order online for curbside pickup ahead of the film screening. Theaters tend to make a good <coughs> chunk of their profits on concessions, so Walmart could follow in the industry's lead. So, <laughs> Way to make money. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> go to Walmart to, uh, to watch movies. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I, I have not heard, and I, I've looked a couple different times, uh, I, ha I had heard through the grapevine that the uh, drive-in in Cuba was going to be opening up, but I have not seen anything official. Yeah, I, I don't know. I haven't been by there to see, and I haven't really uh, seen anything in print or uh, heard anything on the, you know, in other uh, sources that have said they are opening, but uh, I was told sometime back that they were looking to, uh, to reopen, but again, there, there's no new movie releases for them to show, so... Uh, you know, be going back and see if they could get copies of uh, movies that were released, uh, you know, late winter uh, up until the time the coronavirus hit and everything shut down. So I just went to 19drivein.com and uh, doesn't, it doesn't show, it says, well, it says it under now playing, it says the Goonies and Storks. <laughs> the Goonies. Oh. That's going back a ways. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, I don't know. It says uh, June 7th, 1985 was when it. Oops. Well, they haven't updated that website. No, no I mean, that's when the movie came out. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Huh. Well, I don't know. You know, uh, I, I heard on the um, one of our shows here this morning early that uh, um, one of the uh, restaurants that has really – um, seen an increase in sales and stuff during the coronavirus is Sonic. Yes. 
Yeah. So it surprised me a bit. No. So other uh, some of the other restaurants were, you know, looking at Sonic's model, which I think would be difficult to duplicate without putting up awnings and, you know, in the the uh, call yeah. boxes and stuff yeah. like that. But uh, anyway, um, so good for Sonic. I miss Sonic. Yeah. I you know, we had the Sonic here in and, and and I I really enjoy the donuts that are there now, but I do I I miss the the Sonic and my yeah, wife and I we we often uh, when we're in Cuba or uh, Rala we stop and get a limeade or something like that you know yeah uh, the the Sonic here uh, in St James has done I think has done fairly well through all this I know times I've been there to get things it's it's been busy and times I've driven by uh, on that side of town I, I've seen a lot of vehicles there under the stalls and. You know, I, I, I don't know that their business is necessarily higher than it was before the pandemic, but I don't think it suffered as much as, as some others had. So, uh, you know, it's good to see supporting local business. Uh, so let's see. There's, I was looking to see there's, there's apparently there's a game. It's called Finger on the App. It's an app in which players must keep their finger on the smartphone screen and Occasionally move it to a new spot indicated by the app to prevent cheating. The last person to keep their finger on the app wins a, a prize of $25,000, up to $25,000. Um, I guess um, when they wrote this, they said 15 players were still vying for the prize. Uh, the game started with 1.3 million players. And I was trying to find if there was a place... Um, well, this says one day ago, so uh, I don't know. There's no, there's no real update here. I don't know. So, oh yeah, it said yesterday morning about 80 players. Um, 12:55 p.m. Pacific time yesterday, 15 players were left. So uh, I don't know, but uh, I don't know. I can't see your hands, Bob. Are, are you playing the game? Or no, oh, there you. You're not playing the game. So. No. <laughs> Uh, some people have a little bit more free time than others uh, to do yeah. that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. I don't know that I would have the time to do that. Well, you know, we, all these protests that swept across the country recently, uh, there were people that uh, indicated they thought it might lead to a spike in COVID-19 cases. Um, well, there's been some research done. Uh, medical experts, uh, you know, feared the spike. But in the weeks since, there has been little evidence that protests have contributed to a rise in such cases. A new report says, while it's possible protests caused an increase in the spread of the virus among attendees, it hasn't sh yet shown up in the overall population of cities where the events occurred. In fact, researchers believe the protests resulted in more social distancing, not less. Although if you look at the video of those things, uh, I didn't see a lot of social distancing. Well, not in but, Seattle anyway. <laughs> no. Well, and then several others, you know, there were a lot of people crowded in together. Uh, despite This is despite the large gatherings that have made up these protests, some numbering in the, some numbering in the thousands, and the usage of pepper spray or tear gas that caused people to cough more, which would aid in the spread of the virus. Uh, the latest piece of research is uh, on this is a working paper released uh, in June by the National Bureau of Economic Research, which examines how protests affected COVID-19 trends nationwide. That paper found that cities with protest, with protests generally did not show much deviation from their projected COVID-19 caseload and the actual number of new cases. Those cities also followed similar trends in case growth in cities without widespread protests. Researchers studied 315 cities in the U.S., and analyzed the growth of the virus 21 days after the start of the first protest. The authors of the paper found that people not participating in protests had been more likely to stay at home while protesters are on the streets, and in doing so, offset the lack of social distancing that may have been exhibited by the demonstrators. So because there were protests, more people stayed home than otherwise would have, and it sort of counterbalanced each other. Other possible factors researchers considered are protesters could have mitigated spread of the virus by wearing masks or that many may not be getting tested because their symptoms could be less severe, which I wouldn't surprise me. News outlets have reported that public health officials testing protesters in some cities 
found a small percentage of protesters tested positive for COVID-19, such as in Boston, Minneapolis, and Seattle. Health officials quoted in those stories have cited widespread face covering use, the outdoor environment of the demonstrations, and protesters maintaining six feet of separation from each other where possible. But again, much of the video I saw, I, you know, I didn't see a lot of people standing six feet from each other. No. But I, in a lot of instances, they were wearing masks, though. Yeah, they, I did see a lot of that. Yeah. You know, one thing I will say, I did see a lot of the protesters were wearing masks, uh, even though they were within, you know, not six feet apart, but they, there were a lot of them wearing masks. And I even saw one where, uh, there was a group going around uh, either right before or as the protest started and people started walking, there were groups handing out masks to people. Hmm. You know, I did, I did see that. Uh, the nationwide study emphasized that their findings did not imply there was an increase of social distancing and a decrease of COVID-19 case growth across all parts of the population. It's possible some groups, such as protesters, could have an increase in case growth while other groups have a decrease which would, again, sort of even things out. So, Well, if you're thinking about getting any uh, paving done, uh, you can call Jim at Midstate Paving. His phone number is 573-627-2039. And uh, he does paving, chip seal, site work, drainage, striping, seal coating, septic services, grading, lake dredging, and repair. Also, demolition streets, parking lots, and driveways. And uh, that number... For Jim at Midstate Paving is 627-2039. Remember that, 627-2039. And uh, Danny Schmidt is uh, standing by letting us know what's going on down at uh, Schmidt Auto Center. Hey, Danny Schmidt here again from Schmidt Auto Center. As you probably already know, most restrictions in Missouri are being lifted from the COVID outbreak. Schmidt Auto Center will still be taking protective measures for our customers and employees. All of our previous hours are back to normal. Service and body shop 8 to 5, Monday through Friday. Sales 8 to 6, Monday through Friday, and 9 to 1 on Saturday. Of course, sales will still meet with you by appointment if you request. We are here to take care of all your automotive needs, as the Schmidt family has since 1954. Thank you for your support over the last couple months. When you uh, need anything to do with automotive needs, just give us a call, 573-468-2233 or go online, SchmidtAutoCenter.com. A lot of people make appointments that way. Be safe out there, and God bless America. Thank you, Danny. And uh, if you've got any problems with your computer or your laptop or your uh, maybe your network, um, you can call the folks at uh, Net Engineers. They have business solutions for uh, businesses, and they can take care of your personal computer, too. You know, you're not just a customer at Net Engineers. You're a partner. They've got all kinds of IT solutions. They can set up switches, uh, security backup, troubleshooting. They have a whole list of managed services available, like antivirus, backup, firewall, password solutions. They can manage, maintain, and audit your passwords. No customer too small or too big. Call Paul today at Net Engineers. Net Solutions at 573-860-6388. That's 860-6388. And if you've got a uh, computer, you know, a home computer or something like that, you need to drop off. They're located there on the service road in Sullivan between uh, McDonald's and Pizza Hut. Well, one of my uh, new favorite things about the 4th of July holiday, of course, coming up on Saturday, and that's the Nathan's Famous Hot Dog Eating Contest. <laughs> Uh, Joy Chestnut, who's the top-rated competitor in Major League Eating, said the coronavirus-mandated changes to this year's festival offer a trade-off of advantages and disadvantages. Organizers of the annual July 4th event previously announced measures to keep competitors and workers safe amid the pandemic, included moving the contest from outside the eatery to an indoor venue without a live audience, which, man, I, that's... That's one of those things. You just have to have an audience there. I'm sorry. that That's part of the <laughs> full experience. Uh, Chestnut, who is 36, is a 12-time champion of the hot dog eating contest. Uh, he said this week that he sees potential positives and negatives to the measures in force on Saturday. Uh, I think it's a little bit of a benefit being indoors just because I won't be exposed to ridiculous weather. Coney Island has the potential to be really hot and humid on the 4th of July, so we're going to be avoiding that. There's also rain possibility so they're going to avoid that but the largest drawback is going to be the lack of a live crowd the chestnut said he said there's a lot of times when it's been super ridiculously hot and i'm feeling faint before the contest ever starts 
and the crowd just motivates me. Uh, there, there's been times when the crowd motivates me, motivates me to actually get a personal best better than I've ever done in practice. I definitely wish we were in front of a live audience. I just have to remember there are going to be millions of people watching on ESPN and use that as a motivation. Uh, he says air conditioning also could pose obstacles. I, you know, he says, hey, it's good to be out of the heat and humidity, but AC could cause some problems because it'll cool down the hot dogs more than what they do outside in the sun. So the hot dog quality might go down a little bit. <laughs> And more difficult to chew and swallow, so that's a trade-off. Mm. And also, the pandemic has also disrupted his preparations for the competition when he had to fly from his home in California to, to New York five days early to avoid an expected travel ban. Uh, he said the change in plans forced him to cancel his final practicing for the contest. Major <laughs> uh, League Eating, which is a governing body that organizes professional eat, uh, competitive eating contests, confirmed that the travel restrictions in New York forced popular competitors Matt Stoney and Gideon Oji to withdraw from this year's contest, and they will be replaced by some alternates. So there goes some of uh, Joey's top competition. Uh, let's see. Um, I'm not going to go through the tricks that he, <laughs> he talked about using to eat a lot of hot dogs. Uh, Chesta broke the world record at the 2018 contest, finished eating 74 hot dogs and buns in 10 minutes. He fell just short of the record last year with uh, 71 hot dogs. Wow. That's more than a dozen other world records for foods as varied as pizza, carnitas tacos, boysenberry pie, ice cream sandwiches, gyros, and hard-boiled eggs and buffalo wings. And in February, he set a world record. Get this. He ate 32 McDonald's Big Macs in 38 minutes. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've, I've got two things here that I think are really good news for our area. One, um, the technology giant IBM is moving an unspecified number of jobs to Columbia from their facility in Dubuque, Iowa, within the next few months, according to a company spokesperson. So maybe not good news for Dubuque, but good news for um, Columbia, I guess. Fred McNeese would not say how many jobs were involved, but the Associated Press reports the number at approximately 350. The transfer of the jobs was announced to company employees in Dubuque on Wednesday, according to McNeese. The majority of Dubuque employees were offered transfers, but McNeese said no incentives are on the table involving the current job transfers. So that's uh, one piece of good news for the area. The other one is that uh, the Cuban Knights of Columbus annual 4th of July barbecue is at Mesa's parking lot today and tomorrow. There you go. <laughs> Yes, that's good news. Yeah. They, I tell you what, those guys put out a good. They do. Um, so that'll be today uh, and tomorrow, 10 a.m. till 6 p.m. each day at, at Macy's parking lot. Yeah, if you're if you're a big fan of barbecue pork steaks, oh man, I highly recommend you check that out. Yeah, they've got some good ones. So uh, there's a, a man who's been handing out free coffee from his kitchen window. Uh, ben Ramirez is handing out free coffee and a smile to people in his San Francisco neighborhood. On average, Ramirez says he makes about 10 to 15 cups a day. His regulars are essential workers. In compliance with the six-foot social distancing gu guideline, he hands out the coffee with a toy gorilla arm that, you know, the idea was given to him by his five-year-old son, Luca. He's like, hey. <laughs> so, you know. I like that. Doing doing something good for the right for hood. I and like that. And I've got an update for you know people. You know the Starbucks employee that you know was getting all the tips and stuff. Oh, yeah, on the GoFundMe page. Yeah. 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 So last month, the the San Diego Starbucks employee refused to serve a customer who wasn't wearing a mask. So you know she took a photo of him, posted on Facebook. Uh, within hours, the post went viral, bringing in more than one hundred and thirty three thousand comments. Most criticizing Amber Lynn Gillies, Starbucks backed their employee, Lennon Gutierrez, and, and a co-worker who put up a virtual tip jar on GoFundMe for the uh, barista. Um, as of, well, I guess this was, yeah, the, today, the amount raised is over $102,000. Whoa. <laughs> no, I know when we initially had that story the other day, he said he's going to, He's going to donate most of it to local charities. Yeah. 
helping kids and things like that, which is good. It's good to see, you know. So here's the thing. You know, I know there's a lot of people out there that are um, anti-mask and stuff and, and uh, don't believe that the government has the right to um, – and, and I'm, I'm kind of one of those people. I don't really believe that the government has a right to make you wear a mask. However, I do believe that businesses have a right, you know, they have a right to tell you if you're going to come into our facility, you have to wear a mask. So if if that's their rule, then comply with it. You know, don't don't give me the you know, well I'm a free American and it, well yeah, go not wear the mask somewhere else. But if if a business has a rule that you wear masks inside, that's that's their business and y you're not you know. So I don't know why people uh, yeah. are, I don't know why people are being so ridiculous about it yeah and that's well i don't know it's, i think i run out of things to say on those topics you know again I, i'm i'm with you I, i'm not one that's gonna wear a mask all the time but uh again if there's a place that i feel like i have to go into to get something that i want or need and they require the wearing of a mask then you know, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm I've, gonna get a mask and wear it. I have a mask in my car, and um, yeah, and if I, yeah, uh, if, if I need something, I, and I'll wear it. Get what I want or need at someplace else that doesn't require a mask. I may go there. That's true. Um, but you know, I'm as I've said this before. I don't personally see the huge appeal of Starbucks coffee. You know, I, I never have either. Um, I mean, I, I like coffee. I drink a lot of coffee every, pretty much every day. I'll drink the equivalent of probably four five, six cups of coffee. Uh, but I just, I don't see the huge. Well, uh, it's a, I think it's a trendy thing coffee yeah. between Starbucks and what I can make myself at home or get at a local convenience store. Well, I don't drink coffee at all, but, but, uh, occasionally my wife and I would stop in there for um, tea, and then they, the the kind of tea that I wanted, they quit they quit handling it or whatever, and and yeah. so I I don't know I haven't been there in uh, six months something like that I don't know yeah I, I just I just can't see that the that their coffee products are that much better yeah. than I can get somewhere else for the difference in price yeah uh, well yeah when you go in yeah. and you say you know I want I want two large teas and and they they say okay that'll be 28.95 and <laughs> well, <laughs> no yeah, it's, I don't know yeah. what the so yeah, uh, I, I mean it's been a long time since I've been to a Starbucks but the last time I went the, what would be the equivalent of an extra large coffee at a convenience store which costs anywhere from a dollar 59 to a dollar 89 depending upon where you go uh, there would be some would be at least twice that if not more yeah well that's the other thing is is the whatever the mindset there I guess is um, you go uh, I'd like the uh, largest iced tea that you have uh, do you mean the venti I don't know is that the largest one that you have <laughs> well yes sir um, so okay I want the largest tea you have so the venti if that's the largest one <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't know uh, <clears throat> Yeah, the terminology that they have to go through on their orders, I'm just I was like, oh, that's, you know, give me right. a cup of water. Okay. So um, uh, th this is not me. This was a story here that I was reading. It says, my teen comes home from her part-time job last night and informs me that she added air to her tires. She asked if I would go out and check and make sure she did it right. I said, well, you only need to just check the required PSI on the side of the tire and then match it to the tire gauge, right? And she said, well, I never know which number that is. Uh, there's so many numbers on the tire. They need to make tires more user-friendly. <laughs> and I, you know, and I don't well, know that. You know, I, I, I always look at the, I always look at the numbers on the post on the door inside. On the door, yeah. yeah. So I don't Yeah, that's where I, that's where I check. It's a whole lot easier to read. Well, yeah, I'm not even sure. I. I I don't know. I haven't looked at tires lately, but uh, I'm not even sure that they have um, pressure. Uh, yeah, Maybe I they think do. they still do. Maybe they do. Recommended, P, uh, recommended uh, PSI inflate to whatever, but it's uh, it's pretty similar. Maybe within one PSI or of whatever is posted on the sure. 
doorpost there, and it's like I say, you don't have to, you don't have to stand on your head to read it. <laughs> so real quick here, uh, we've got uh, Gary Johanning, Mike Hoffman, Abby Klontz, Ray Schoenveld, Sandy Stegman, David Saltzman, and Becky Lawrence. They all have birthdays today. Tomorrow, Henry Harms. On Sunday, Julie Landwehr, Jackie Thompson, Doyle Stack, Heather Baus, Ethan Sellers, Chad Lake, and happy anniversary today to Dean and Mike Hollis celebrating their 73rd. We are AM 1560 KTUI Sullivan 94.1 FM. You can pick us up on the TuneIn app and YouTube Live. It's uh, 8 o'clock. Bob, I'll talk to you in about a half hour. All right, Sam. It's 8 o'clock. Here's the news. With Chris Barnes. Still higher than historically average, the unemployment rate in America fell to 11.1% based on the report released by the Labor Department yesterday. It was 13.3% in May. President Trump commenting on yesterday's report from the Labor Department while speaking at a Spirit of America business event at the White House. The United States economy has added almost 5 million new jobs in the month of June. That's shattering all expectations and shattering all records. The U.S. Supreme Court is delaying a ruling on releasing grand jury testimony from the Mueller Russia investigation. The court yesterday blocking a request from the White House to see grand jury documents from the former special counsel's Russia investigation. And this is USA Radio News. This is good news, maybe exactly when you need it to. Right now, MediShare is waiving their new member fees. This could save you money on top of all that you'll save each month by becoming a member of MediShare. So many people are looking for a health care solution right now, seeing the cost of COBRA plans, for instance. And MediShare is the affordable alternative to health insurance. A typical family saves $500 a month, but you might save even more. MediShare is a Christian community that shares each other's health care costs, and because of the current economic situation, they're making it easier than ever. Apply by June 30th. You can save an additional $170 on your first month. I'll give you the number here in a second, and if you call, you can get a price within two minutes. Just tell them the promo code SHARE to receive your additional savings. Maybe now is the time to make the switch, like more than 400,000 people already have, and start saving. Here it is. Call 833-34-BIBLE. That's 833-34-BIBLE. 833-34-BIBLE. Top congressional leaders got a classified briefing yesterday on reports that Russia put bounties on the heads of U.S. soldiers in Afghanistan. U.S. House Speaker Democrat Nancy Pelosi's reaction after getting the briefing, she said protection of U.S. troops should always be a top priority. We expect the President of the United States to give them that same force protection, that same priority. And we are disappointed that that has not happened. President Trump has called the reports fake news and a hoax. Pelosi said the president should spend more time reading his daily intelligence reports and less time, in her words, planning military parades and defending relics of the Confederacy. As the holiday weekend dawns, there will be many people in the way of some storms, especially in the south and the north-central U.S. will be sweating in temperatures much higher than average. And this is USA Radio News. While you have free time and you're sitting at home and you ponder what kind of gifts to buy for someone, PatriotDepot.com has you covered from puzzles, games, novelty items. If you're looking for some unique style items when it comes to the president, for more, you can check out PatriotDepot.com. Call 844-377-8052. That's 844-377-8052. Or PatriotDepot.com. Use promo code USA. Well, there are some very strange parties taking place in Alabama, and USA Radio's John Hunt explains. City officials in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, are warning that several students are throwing coronavirus parties where people who have the virus are invited to intentionally infect others. The Tuscaloosa Fire Chief Randy Smith said at a city council hearing that these parties have now been happening for several weeks. They said they thought it was a rumor at first and did research and confirmed that doctors had the same information. The state's Department of Public Health said in a statement that anyone who is in violation of the governor's health order faces misdemeanors and fines. A city councilor said that money is collected at the parties and whoever gets the coronavirus first wins the cash. This is USA Radio News. For the first time in decades, more Americans are likely to see more immigration. 
The latest Gallup poll finding that 34% of Americans surveyed would like to see immigration increase, while 28% would like to see it drop. 36% say they think immigration should stay at the current levels. It's the first time, though, since 1965 that Gallup has shown people wanting more immigration, outnumbering those backing a drop in immigration. Remember, you can find us online anytime. We're at usaradio.com. That's usaradio.com. And for USA Radio News, I'm Chris Barnes. From everyone on the front lines at BJC Healthcare and Washington University Physicians, thank you. For a while now, you've put our health first by staying at home. Now, it's time to put your health first. If you need an appointment with one of our more than 4,000 health care providers, we're here for you. And when you come in, you'll notice the things we're doing to keep you safe. Find out more at bjc.org slash keeping you safe. I'm Bill Wise. Kansas City police say an officer was shot and critically wounded yesterday. Witnesses say a man left a fast food restaurant around 4.30. He turned and fired shots towards officers, striking one of the officers. The other officer returned fire, striking that suspect who died at the scene. The officer that was shot in the head was taken to a hospital for surgery where he was reported in critical condition. St. Joseph Tourism, already mired in a tough year, absorbed a big blow when the Kansas City Chiefs made it official by announcing they will not be holding training camp in St. Joseph this year. Executive Director Marcy Bennett with the St. Joseph Convention and Visitors Bureau says the cancellation of training camp this year is disappointing. Especially coming off the year that they had last year, I think everybody was anticipating even larger crowds this year and so it is very disappointing but somewhat understandable the nfl ruled all teams must hold camp at their own facilities due to covid 19 this is news on missouri net electricity makes our everyday lives more convenient it can also be deadly if not used properly your local electric cooperative urges you to check your boat docks be sure ground fault circuit interrupters are installed and working properly on all dock receptacles. Metal frame docks should have bonding jumpers connected to a ground rod on shore. Have your dock inspected every year by a professional. Working to keep you safe. We are Missouri's Electric Cooperatives. Learn more at membersfirst.coop today. As your Touchstone Energy Cooperative, providing you dependable, affordable power is our first priority. Come rain or come shine. But you can also count on us for localized information on the latest renewable energy options. Information that's every bit as reliable as our energy. Learn more at touchstoneenergy.com. We are Missouri's electric cooperatives. Learn more at membersfirst.coop today. Hi, my name is Tyler Garner, loan officer at First State Community Bank in Sullivan. Whether you're looking for a home or building a new one, it's good to have options. That's why our team at First State Community Bank offers flexible options to fit your specific needs. See our team for financing that includes construction loans, fixed rate mortgages, homes with acreage, lot and acreage loans, refinancing and pre-qualification. Come see me, Tyler, at FSCB in Sullivan today and I'll work to find the right solution for you. FSCB is an equal housing lender and member FDIC. Coldwell Banker, Reeves Realtors, and Sullivan is an honest, professional, and friendly real estate agency with an A-plus rating from the Better Business Bureau. Whether you're buying or selling, the experienced agents with Coldwell Banker, Reeves Realtors, will help guide you through this difficult process. Rachel Shoemaker and her agents use the latest technology like CirclePix Marketing, Facebook, and other social media. If you're looking for a full or part-time career, contact Rachel to find out how you can become an agent. A vital part of our community, Coldwell Banker, Reeves Realtors of Sullivan. Jost Tire and Bourbon Tire and Lube are open to serve our communities during this difficult time of COVID-19 pandemic. It is our priority to take the health and safety of those customers and our employees seriously during this time. We have modified our store hygiene protocol and cleaning policies in our office and while working with customer vehicles. Jost Tire and Bourbon Tire and Lube are open with normal business hours for those in need of services. Visit Jost Tire Company in Owensville or Bourbon Tire and Lube in Bourbon for all of your tire needs. Colonel Eric T. Olson, the superintendent of the Missouri State Highway Patrol, encourages Missouri's travelers to make smart choices for a safe July 4th holiday. The state's wide variety of recreational opportunities are a great way to celebrate our nation's freedoms. 
But no matter what you plan for the long weekend, if you can't go wrong if you choose to follow all Missouri traffic and boating laws. It is also important to observe social distancing and other CDC guidelines related to the coronavirus and stay home if you are ill. During the 2019 counting period, 15 people were killed and 457 injured in Missouri over the holiday in 1,109 traffic crashes. Over the 2019 July 4th holiday, troopers arrested 162 people for driving while intoxicated. In 2019, there were nine boating crashes, which included four injuries, no fatalities. Three people drowned during last year's July 4th holiday. Troopers made 13 boating while intoxicated arrests in 2019. The 2020 counting period for the July 4th holiday will be from 6 p.m. today until 11.59 p.m. on Sunday. The Highway Patrol will be participating in Operation CARE, which is Crash Awareness and Reduction Effort, and Operation Dry Water over the July 4th holiday weekend. Operation Dry Water specifically targets impaired vessel operators. All available troopers will be patrolling Missouri roadways and waterways to enforce traffic and boating laws and offering assistance as needed. You can always contact the Highway Patrol on your cell phone with star 55. The Highway Patrol made an arrest in Phelps County at 11.53 last night. 34-year-old Rachel K. Skaggs of Rolla was arrested on DWI first. Failure to drive on the right half of the roadway, she was booked and released. At 10.59 last night in Crawford County, 37-year-old Amanda E. Jondrow of Steelville was arrested on felony possession of a controlled substance, methamphetamine, felony possession of controlled substance, Xanax, felony warrant out of Dent County for the Sheriff's Office for possession of amphetamine and burglary forced entry. She was taken to the Crawford County Jail and held without bond. There was an arrest at 7.03 last night in Phelps County. 29-year-old Madeline I. Willhauer of Taylorville, Illinois, was arrested on felony possession of a controlled substance, ecstasy, unlawful possession of marijuana under 10 grams, possession of drug paraphernalia, and speeding. She was taken to the Phelps County Jail and later released. Another arrest at 7.03 p.m. in Phelps County. 27-year-old Stacy L. Scott of Stonington, Illinois, was arrested for felony possession of a controlled substance, ecstasy, unlawful possession of marijuana under 10 grams. She was taken to the Phelps County Jail and later released. And an arrest yesterday in Franklin County. 21-year-old Brianna L. Sloan of Joplin Arrested on a patrol charge, two counts, felony possession of controlled substance, one gram of cocaine and one gram of methamphetamine, misdemeanor possession of marijuana, 20 grams. She was taken to the St. Clair Police Department and released. The Franklin County Presiding Commissioner, Tim Brinker, addressed some inquiries regarding masks and whether the Franklin County Commission plans to impose a mask requirement. At this time, the commission is not considering a mandatory mask rule but they will continue to support the choice of the individual to keep themselves and others as safe as possible. Franklin County currently has 35 active cases of COVID-19, 16 in skilled nursing care, and 19 who reside elsewhere in the county. There were four new positive test results reported yesterday, a 17-year-old male from Union, a 38-year-old male from Union, a 17-year-old female from Catawissa, and a 64-year-old female from Villa Ridge. The total number of confirmed cases since the beginning of the pandemic is now at 210. There have been two additional recoveries, a 42-year-old woman from Washington and a 64-year-old man from Gerald. Total recoveries to date, 157, and fatalities in Franklin County are at 18. The Franklin County Health Department is announcing a public health alert due to a possible COVID-19 community exposure. Prior to being diagnosed, a COVID-19 positive person attended the Loomis Brothers Circus in Sullivan on June 26th. The case was infectious at the time, but not symptomatic. The Crawford County Health Department has issued a COVID-19 health alert. Individuals at these locations on these dates are at low risk for contracting COVID-19, but should monitor for symptoms. On the 25th of June, Sullivan Walmart after 3 p.m., on the 26th at the Sullivan Walmart after 3 p.m. and at Mesa's Supermarket in Cuba. On the 27th, Cuba Walmart approximately 4 to 5 p.m. and Cuba Casey's between 4 and 5 p.m. On the 29th at Bourbon Town and Country in the afternoon and Bourbon Dollar General in the afternoon, Cuba Walmart in the afternoon. 
these locations are for more than one case. If you have spoken to a nurse from the Crawford County Health Department, you were already informed of your risk to this patient. That brings the total for confirmed cases in Crawford County to 15. A Washington County resident who tested positive for COVID-19 attended the Potosi High School graduation on June 27th. Officials are warning of possible community exposure. According to Washington County, the Potosi R3 School District has been notified and working closely with the Health Department to notify the public. Close contacts have been notified by the Health Department. Any person who attended the event should monitor themselves for symptoms through July 11th. Washington's numbers are 9 active, 19 recovered, 1 death. The offices of Merrimack Regional Planning Commission, or MRPC, and the Phelps County PHA are now open. The Phelps County PHA is seeing clients by appointment only. Appointments can be made by calling 573-265-4200. Drop-in visits are discouraged. Social distancing and the use of masks and hand sanitizers is encouraged during visits. Individuals who have any flu-like symptoms or have been in contact with anyone who has had flu-like symptoms or has tested positive for COVID-19 within the past 14 days are required to reschedule their appointments. Housing applications are available at phelpsco.housingmanager.com or in paper form in the box to the right of the Phelps County PHA entrance. Completed applications and other paperwork can be left in the locked drop box to the left of the housing entrance. The Sullivan City Council will be meeting in regular session on Tuesday, July 7th at 7 p.m. in the Council Chambers at 210 West Washington. The call to order will come at 7 o'clock under requests and petitions. Kathy Birdi from uh, Manion Street there in regards to nuisances and Temple Baptist Church uh, having a family night and they're asking for a temporary street closure of Beeman Street on the 9th of July from 5.30 to 7.30. They do have real estate litigation and personnel scheduled for closed session. The Cuba Knights of Columbus having their annual 4th of July barbecue at Mesa's parking lot in Cuba. That will be going on today and tomorrow from 10 a.m. till 6 p.m. each day. The Crawford County Youth in Ag Show and Sale going on July 10th and 11th at the Interstate Regional Stockyards in Cuba. KTUI will be broadcasting the livestock auction at 2 p.m. on Saturday, July 11th. The Franklin County Government Center, the Judicial Center, the Historic Courthouse, the Highway Department, and the Health Department are all closed today in observance of the Independence Day holiday. Franklin County Sheriff's Department, of course, is open as they are 24 hours a day each and every day. One size fits all. That may be all right for an adjustable belt or cheap sunglasses, but when it comes to your financial needs, no one wants a one size fits all strategy. Hi, I'm Donnie Greenwald, your Sullivan Edward Jones financial advisor. My most important goals are yours. That's why I take the time to understand your needs so that I can recommend personalized strategies with your goals in mind. Contact me today, 573-468-6046. Knowing you, that's how Edward Jones makes sense of investing. Member SIPC. Randy Mack Heating and Cooling LLC has been serving the area for 35 years. They do new installations, replacements, upgrades, humidifiers, air cleaners, service, custom-made ductwork, preventative maintenance schedules. You can call now to get your system checked out for summer. Randy Mack also does geothermal. Financing is available. Call Randy Mack today at 468-4927. That's 468-4927 for Randy Mack Heating and Cooling LLC. A lifetime of love, you lived a lifetime. When a loved one passes on, memories come rushing back. Memories of a lifetime of love. Dad would always be giving of himself. Sharing his love with all of us. We would be honored to care for your family in your time of loss. A lifetime of love. Don and Lisa Mizell. Mizell Funeral Home, Cuba. Funeral notices on Fridays are brought to you by Life Care Center of Sullivan. When rehabilitation from an accident, illness, or surgery is required, Life Care Center in Sullivan offers a full array of services. Rehab Home Suites offers you a private room with flat screen TV, a mini refrigerator, and a private phone line. And there's a full staff of in-house therapists, including a speech therapist. At Life Care, their goal is to get you back to normal as soon as possible. Stop in and see Life Care Home Suites at 875 Dunsford Drive in Sullivan.
In recent funeral notices, Lola Johnson, a banderman of St. Clair, passed away Saturday at the age of 86. She survived by her husband, Mont Johnson of St. Clair, a son-in-law, Paul Meyer, and wife, Catherine of Wildwood, and four grandchildren. Funeral services will be held at 11 o'clock this morning at the Prospect Baptist Church in Lonedale. Burial will be in the Mount Hope Cemetery in Lonedale. Visitation for Lola will be from 10 o'clock this morning until the time of services at 11 at the Prospect Baptist Church. Memorials may be made to Prospect Baptist Church in Lonedale. Condolences may be sent to the family through the website russellcolonialfuneralhome.com. Carl Holstru of St. James passed away Sunday at the age of 82. He survived by his wife, Margaret, a daughter, Bonnie Parker of Colorado, uh, sons, Robert and wife, Robin of Labadee, and Stephen and wife, J.C., four grandchildren, four great-grandchildren, other relatives, and many friends. Funeral services for Carl will be held on Saturday at 11 a.m. at the Gottenstrader Chapel in Owensville. Burial will be in the Countryside Memorial Gardens with full military honors. Visitation will be held Saturday from 9 until the time of services at 11 a.m. at the Gottenstrader Chapel in Owensville. Funeral notices on Fridays are brought to you by Life Care Center of Sullivan. At Sullivan Bank, we offer competitive rates on your deposits and loans. We know rates are not everything. We are all about building relationships. Hello, this is Debbie Durham with Sullivan Bank. Knowing that you have someone you can talk to, whether it's to choose the right account or a home loan, Sullivan Bank will be here now and in the future. As a strong community bank, it's important to us to help you achieve financial success and have a trusting relationship in us. Sullivan Bank, stop by today and let's chat. From the Cardinals Classic Series and the Cardinals Radio Network last night, Cardinals beat the Dodgers 4-2 in Game 4 of the 2013 National League Championship Series. Game 6 of that series coming up tonight at 6.15. You'll hear it on 102.1 KTUI-FM and on the TuneIn app. If the Blues successfully defend their Stanley Cup, it looks like it's going to be on Canadian soil. Although nothing has been made official, multiple reports on Wednesday indicated that the National Hockey League has decided on Edmonton and Toronto as its hub cities for its expected return to play in early August. Under the 2014 postseason format, the 12 Western Conference teams, the Blues included, are expected to play in Edmonton. The 12 Eastern Conference teams will gather in Toronto. All along, the league seemed intent on placing one hub city in Canada and another in the United States, namely Las Vegas. But you can blame the coronavirus, the league is steering clear of the U.S. entirely entirely, particularly because of a spike in cases in Las Vegas. Besides selecting hub cities, the NHL's attempt to resume hockey also hinges on health and safety protocols for Phase 3 training camp and for Phase 4 postseason play, plus agreeing on a new collective bargaining agreement. There was enough progress there in a marathon negotiating session Tuesday night into Wednesday that it was reported a deal could be finalized over the next couple of days with separate ratification votes by the NHL Players Association and the NHL's Board of Governors representing all 31 teams coming by the end of the weekend. Blues GM Doug Armstrong had no comment on the negotiations, but he did say on thir Wednesday that two-thirds of the the team is in St. Louis, and the full squad is expected to be on hand by the middle of next week to begin training camp. The Show Me State games will go on this summer with opening ceremonies beginning July 17th in Columbia. The games will last two weekends, July 17th through 19th and 24th through 26th, and feature most of the usual events. The first weekend will include baseball and softball. Baseball and softball registration must be completed by July 7th. Volleyball registration will also be due by July 7th. Golfers will compete. July 17th through 19th at AL Justin Golf Course in Columbia. Registration for golf must be completed by July 8th. Shooting events will also be held that first weekend. Muzzle shooting registration is due by July 14th, while registration for other shooting events is due on the 13th. Cycling events will be held on the 18th and 19th, with registration must be completed by July 14th. Events that will be held off until 2021 include swimming, wrestling, martial arts, track and field, powerlifting, handball, rugby, judo, judo, ice hockey, gymnastics, football, and fencing. Former Missouri Tiger defensive tackle and Cleveland Browns 2020 third-round draft choice Jordan Elliott signed his rookie contract on Thursday. Elliott was chosen 88th overall by Cleveland, played two seasons for Mizzou, recording 44 tackles, including two and a half sacks and eight and a half tackles for loss in his redshirt junior season last year. A Missouri City, Texas native, he transferred to Mizzou after playing one season for Texas. He was named to the All-SEC first team and second 
second team All-American by the Associated Press in 2019. Five former Missouri Tigers will join the Mizzou Intercollegiate Athletics Hall of Fame in 2020, which will be the 30th class in the Hall's inception. Chidi Imhall, Kirsten Peoples, Mike Rogers, Nancy Rudder, and Don Smith are the five who will be formally inducted into the Hall of Fame on September 25th. They will also be honored at Missouri's football game against Eastern Michigan the following day. Imo competed in men's track and field from 1983 to 86, winning seven NCAA All-American honors and 11 conference championship gold medals in his time as a Tiger. Peoples competed in women's track and field from 2012 to 15 and was a 10-time All-American in indoor-outdoor weight throw, shot put, discus, and hammer throw. Rogers was a St. Louis native who holds the second-best batting average in Mizzou baseball program history. He also holds the school's slugging percentage record and previously held the program's home run record until it was broken in 2008. Rudder was a founding member of Missouri's women's basketball inaugural 1974-75 recruiting class. She holds four top 10 program finishes, including free throws made, rebounds per game, total points scored, and career points per game. Ann Smith was an acclaimed shot putter who finished number two at the NCAA 1961 Outdoor Championships and also won shot put titles at three different relay events during the 1962 season. Locally, the Sullivan AAA COVID-19 Summer League Baseball team will be off over the holiday weekend. Next game's scheduled for Thursday, July 9th as they will host Steelville at Campbell Field, Sunny Jim Bottomley Park. Six and eight o'clock are game times. Those games aired on 94.1 FM. Uh, last report, they will try to make up the doubleheader against Herman that was rained out on Wednesday. Activities and athletics can resume at Sullivan High School on Monday, July 6th. Everyone who participates after that date must sign a release of liability waiver before participating. You can download that waiver on the homepage of the athletics website at SullivanAthletics.com. Sullivan Sports Boosters Annual Golf Tournament, sponsored by Sullivan Bank, coming up Friday, August 7th at Sullivan Golf Course. Tournament will be held rain or shine. Registration at 9, tee off at 10. Cost is $250 per team for the three-person scramble tournament. Lots of prizes awarded, food available throughout the day, and there's a dinner after the tournament. Several sponsorship opportunities are also available. All proceeds will benefit Sullivan High School athletic programs. If you'd like to get signed up or have any questions, contact Natalie Counts at Missouri Baptist Sullivan Hospital, 573-468-5619. Sports on the air tonight. It's Cardinals baseball in the Cardinals Classic Series as they take on the L.A. Dodgers in Game 6 of the 2013 National League Championship Series. 6.15 is game time. You'll hear tonight on 102.1 KTUI-FM and on the TuneIn app at KTUI-FM. That is your look at sports on this Friday. This is Bobby D.
right, that was Stars and Stripes uh, Forever, performed by the uh, um, U.S. Air Force uh, Band. And uh, I don't know when exactly it was uh, performed, but it was at Wright-Patterson uh, Air Force Base, which is one of the places that I'd like to uh, um, go next uh, to see the uh, Air Force uh, Museum there. The, um, it, so I think it's where Dayton, Ohio, or something like that. So Yeah, highly uh, recommended. I've been there. And yeah. Really enjoy it. Uh, would like to kind of rush my tour through there. I'll have to go back again sometime. Yeah, um, that's kind of like me. I, you know, uh, when I went to Pearl Harbor, uh, uh, we spent so long on the uh, uh, USS Missouri that we didn't get uh, a chance to go see the uh, Pacific Air Museum. And so uh, I told my wife that we need to go back, you know, so I can go through that, you know. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> Good reasons, any right? She, but she's all for it, and not necessarily to go to the Pacific Air Museum, you know. But uh, <laughs> yeah, well, that's where you have the your, you know, you've heard of taking uh, husbands and wives taking separate vacations. Yes, you just have you know separate parts of your vacation there, you know. You know, um, w we actually when when I told her because uh, uh, we we had the opportunity to go to Maui, um, and I told her I said, look, you know. I am going to go to Pearl Harbor. I said it may may be the only time I ever get a chance to go, and yeah. uh, I said if I'm that close, I'm going to go. You know, she's like, well, you know, it's on another island, and I was like, yeah, but they're real close. <laughs> it's not a long flight, you know. Yeah. And uh, so she said, well, okay, so uh, um, that you know, she she said, well, I'll just go shopping in Honolulu or go to Waikiki or you know something like that, and. And then before we got there, she had changed her mind and decided that she did want to go. And she said she was really glad that she went to Pearl. So, yeah. Um, and so we didn't really get to spend much time in Honolulu. Um, but so I, I think she'd like to go back. Although I'm not uh, – we really enjoyed our time in Maui. It's a really nice island. And, um, yeah. So I don't know what we'll do. If we ever get a chance to go back there, uh, I'm not sure. <coughs> but uh, um, so there was a Chinese villager – uh, he was very disappointed to find out that the bear that had been terrorizing his chickens could also apparently hold his liquor. The, uh -oh. the poultry farmer had plotted to trap the black bear by baiting it with honey mixed with two liters of very strong alcohol. The next morning, he went out. He found that all the spiked honey was gone, and there were two dead chickens. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about a plan backfiring. Right. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, you know, if the bear's been hibernating for a while, he's probably ready to yeah. it. Well, you know, you, you've heard of Kurt Warner, haven't you? I have, yeah. Okay. Well, uh, most people know he was uh, quarterback for the uh, St. Louis Rams when they won the Super Bowl in 99. We had a football team? Yeah, for a while. <laughs> um, anyway. The rags to riches story of former grocery store stock boy and Super Bowl winning quarterback Kurt Warner has been chronicled on numerous occasions over the past two decades, culminating is in his enshrinement into the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 2017. Well, now that tale is officially being transformed into a major motion picture with Kingdom Story Company and Lionsgate announcing on Wednesday that actor Zachary Levy will star as Warner in American Underdog, the Kurt Warner story, with productions uh, expected to begin late this year. The film would be produced and directed by brothers John and Andrew Irwin. Writers are David, uh, David Aaron Cohen, who wrote Friday Night Lights, John Gunn and John Irwin, and producing is uh, Mark Ciardi, who did Invincible and The Rookie. So uh, a, a good, strong uh, cast of uh, production people and writers have done sports movies before. Of course, then Philadelphia Eagles coach Dick Vermeil was featured in Invincible, which was the story of walk-on Vince Papale. Vermeil, of course, was the Rams head coach in 98 when uh, Warner made the roster cut against the protests of then-offensive coordinator Jerry Rome. And um, uh, Rome was, uh, had brought in another guy as a backup quarterback a couple of years before that and was fighting to keep him on the roster. Uh, the Rams had actually... Uh, picked up Warner from the Arena Football League and put him on the roster, then assigned him to NFL Europe, which was going on at that time, uh, so that 
they could, uh, you know, tell the fans there that they that their quarterback was on an NFL roster. Had a good year in Europe. Uh, came back and then uh, was uh, in the Rams camp in '98, the '98-'99 season. Uh, he beat out the guy that the offensive coordinator wanted to keep, and then became the starting quarterback uh, when Trent Green, who's a St. Louis boy, had been picked up as a free agent. He tore his ACL in the third preseason game. Warner came in and then led the Rams to the Super Bowl win that year. Uh, you know, uh, Warner, is, and this is something that probably is kind of forgotten in all this, he was left unprotected in the 1999 expansion draft for the Cleveland Browns, who elected not to pick him. Uh, so if Warner had been cut like the offensive coordinator wanted, or if he had been picked up by the Browns in the expansion draft, the remarkable story may never have happened. Uh, let's see, um, Levy who said that Kurt's story is one of relentless faith in his own abilities, but even more so in a higher power. Uh, when I read Kurt's story, I identified with the quiet strength he found to persevere, something I think anybody can recognize in their own lives. This is the kind of underdog story that sports movies are all about, and the fact that it's true makes it even more special. Levy says, I'm thrilled to be part of uh, bringing his story to the audiences. Uh, said Andrew Irwin, this is about an everyman who never let his dream die. Uh, Zachary was born to play this role, and when you add in his uncanny resemblance to Kurt Warner, we're thrilled to be working with him. And really, I saw some uh, pictures of this, you know, the two side by side. And, uh, you know, I, I don't think they, they could have gotten anybody that looked any more like Kurt Warner than this guy. Uh, hopefully that he can, he can, you know, make the – I mean, I know a lot of it will be actual game footage of Warner, you know, playing in games. Uh, but hopefully in the, uh, the, the parts where, you know, at practice or training camp or whatever – he'll be able to do the, the quarterbacking stuff well enough to, you know, you make know, it justifiable, uh, I guess, or make it believable. But I'm looking forward to this. Uh, I, I'm looking forward to seeing that when it comes out in a couple of years. So I, I don't remember. I know I uh, didn't uh, – I think – sorry, I turned my mute off. Uh, I was trying to remember uh, – um, I watched the movie um, with uh, – uh, was it Mark Wahlberg that played Vince Papali? Yeah. Um, he, uh, uh, I don't know, did he look anything like Vince Papali? I don't know. <laughs> I don't uh, well, I don't you know, know. Not, I don't think it's quite as similar as as what we've got here with Kurt Warner and, and Zach uh, Levy. Uh, but there was, I mean, there was some resemblance. Uh, physically, I mean, just as far as uh, body size and things like that, um, you know, I, I think there were a lot of similarities there uh, and just attitude-wise because I had seen when that movie came out, I remember seeing some interviews with uh, Vince Papali and uh, Mark Wahlberg, I thought, was a, was an excellent choice uh, to play him in that movie. The, you know, they uh, Wahlberg really uh, brought out a lot of the, uh, you know, characteristics, a lot of his, uh, uh, his you know, emotion that he played with and, and just uh, I thought – Wahlberg did a great job in that movie. And I, I really did. I thought that was a, a real good choice there. You know, some of these in sports movies, you know, when they're talking about real life people, some of the actors, they get to play them. There's a, you know, there, there's a lot to be desired, so to speak, but I thought they did a good job there. And, I, and I'm really hoping that uh, this, this comes out the same with uh, the Kurt Warner movie. So, you know, I'm not the world's greatest sports fan, but uh, yeah. uh we can't all be. I know. But uh, um, you know what my favorite football movie is? Oh, gosh. Uh, Longest Yard. The Replacements. Oh, yeah. I love that one. I you know, that. that's one of those movies. And, I, you know, there's a, there's a handful of movies that I can come into at any point in the movie and watch it till the end. You know, I can, oh, I, yeah. I can start at the beginning or I can come in in the middle or five minutes from the end. And for whatever reason, I don't know, you know, because I'm not a big football fan or anything, but uh, The Replacements is one of those movies with Keanu Reeves. And, and uh, uh, another movie that I, that's like that is not sports. It's uh, Quigley Down Under. Yeah. Qu and it, it's whatever, you know, if I'm surfing through the channels and I find Quigley, uh, The Princess Bride, I will, anywhere in that, I, 
Yeah. Uh, there's just a handful of movies that I that I will watch, you know. So, but uh, yeah, um, the replacements is especially. Um, uh, I mean, there's a lot of good parts in it, but the the replacements where they're in jail, and uh, uh, what's the song they were singing? They were all dancing. Uh, oh yeah. First I was uh, afraid. I was petrified. Yeah. Except, yeah. Anyway. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's hilarious. I love that movie. Oh uh, yeah, that's uh, that's one of my favorite movies. I, I really, I'm like you. I can. I, you know, I see that on, I'll just, if I'm going through the guide or whatever, and I see that on, even if it started, I'll, I'll flick over and, and turn that on. Cause yeah, I love that movie. That's, that's one of my favorites as well. Well, they say for the uh, sixth, you know, yeah, for the sixth time now in nine days, new coronavirus cases in the United States set a single day record, uh, hitting 53,000 yesterday per New York Times data. Several city and state governments have put reopening plans on pause and revived restrictions on bars and social gatherings following the spike in coronavirus infections. Earlier this week, America's top infectious disease expert, Dr. Anthony Fauci, warned that the uh, figure could hit 100,000. Texas Governor Greg Abbott issued an order. This, <coughs> this says Texas Governor Greg Abbott of Texas. I hope that he's makes from, sense. I'm, hope, I'm hoping he's from Texas if he's their governor. Yeah. He issued an order requiring most Texans to wear masks in public. New York City has indefinitely postponed the return of indoor dining. California Governor Gavin Newsom required indoor businesses, including bars, restaurants, and uh, movie theaters, to close in 19 counties, including Los Angeles and Orange. Uh, Miami shutting down the beaches again over the 4th of July holiday weekend. That's, that's going to hurt. Uh, Miami Beach is also reinstating their nightly curfew. So, you know, that's it's uh, it's bad for the this uh, second wave or the surge or whatever to be coming at another holiday weekend. Uh, yeah. Um, of course, in yeah. Franklin County now, the uh, our commissioners have said that they're not going to really uh, curtail anything or uh, require masks. Although now they they are asking you to use common sense. Do the social distancing, wear masks, especially you know, um, you know, if you're in in an area where there are people and stuff, they 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 ask you to use, you know, some common sense, which which I appreciate, uh, you know, the government asking you to use common sense. Um, uh, I'm, I'm, it's a shame they have to ask you to do that, but but uh, yeah. but what worries me is is like St. Louis and St. Louis County have. You know they're requiring everybody to wear masks. They, you know, they're uh, curtailing some activities. I think um, so. You know, so, so those people will probably come out to Franklin County, <laughs> you know, or or Jefferson County or whoever. You know, whoever is not. Yeah. Um, so. St. Charles County. Yeah. So that worries me a little bit. I guess. Uh, yeah. Well, it's. And there's going to be some fireworks bad. stuff, you know, going on. Uh, Sullivan had theirs last night. Uh, I think Steelville's is tomorrow night. Uh, Union, I think, is having some. Uh, I know. Yeah, Union's having Saint a big Charles, display. They're having a big display in St. Charles. Uh, I I guess they're going to go ahead and shoot uh, fireworks off of the river or something. But um, in St. Yeah, Louis, yeah, they're not no no crowds downtown. No. Uh, you know, we're having our usual uh, display here, although some changes have been made. Uh, for the last several years, they've actually shot them off. Um, behind the veterans home uh, property and people will gather there. There's some big open areas where people can pull out blankets or lawn chairs and sit or, you know, pull up on the streets around it and cross the highway and, you know, some businesses nearby and, and in the neighborhoods. Now we can, we can see a lot of it from our house, but not all of it. We've usually gone up the, uh, up a couple of blocks with some friends and watched it last few years or, gone up to the veterans home grounds but they've moved it this year here in st james they're actually going to shoot them off uh out in the field out by the middle school but they're not going to allow people to be out there on the grounds of the middle school while they're setting the fireworks off because it's in the fallout area but there are uh, there's a church in a in a car dealer out there that's got big parking lots where you can park um there's some uh, areas across the interstate uh, where you can park to watch it and things like that. So I, I think people should be able to get a, a pretty good spot to see it. Of course, uh, Rollo's not having their uh, Lions Club Carnival, but they are shooting fireworks off tonight at 10 and Saturday at 11 
from out of Lions Club Park. They're just not allowing anybody on the grounds. But as usual, the parking lots and those businesses around Lions Club out there will be jammed full of people to, you know, I, I think they're actually going to let people park out there like they normally would for the carnival. They're just not letting anybody, you know, they're telling you to stay with your car either inside or, or outside right by your car and, and not gather with the groups of other people. Uh, so they are letting some people on the park grounds with just, you know, they can't, there's no carnival for them to go see or anything. They're just wanting to stay in the parking areas and watch it from your car, but uh, well, they are still going to have it. Well, I was just, while you were talking there, uh, I was looking at my echo show here and um, it said how to make steak tacos. And I was, Ooh. I was like, you grill a steak, put it in a taco shell. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> what i don't know anyway yeah. uh um uh, we're gonna listen to speaking of steaks if you want a good steak uh, go down to uh, frank's market everyone at frank's market in downtown sullivan is so excited to get to see all your happy faces now that everyone can get out of the house again but that doesn't mean you can't still enjoy the benefits of online shopping whether at the office or sitting on your couch you can order from anywhere Choose from pickup or delivery and enjoy the convenience of one of our trained pickers shopping for you. Sign up and start shopping today at www.frikesmarketonline.com. All right, we're coming up on uh, 13 minutes in front of 9 o'clock. I've got 79 degrees here at the studios of uh, KTUI. And uh, um, I saw this story uh, earlier today. It says, an analysis of more than a decade's worth of tax assessments and sales data for 118 million homes across the U.S. shows that black families pay 13% more in property taxes each year than a white family would under the same conditions. In their working paper, two economists found deep-seated patterns of housing discrimination in almost every state with unfair property assessments in areas where black and Hispanic homeowners live creating an additional impediment to minority wealth building. Researchers also say black homeowners who filed tax appeals were less likely to win. Well, now that last thing there, I'm not, uh, you know, I don't know what to say about that. It, that doesn't sound right. But, um, you know, um, a, lot of, a lot of minorities live in urban areas, and tax rates are, are typically higher in urban areas. And while... You know, um, tax rates uh, in the rural areas are lower and not as many, you know, uh, minorities, uh, uh, blacks, Hispanics, you know, they don't as much live out in the rural areas like that. So so I can kind of I can kind of see that I don't like the, the, the last part there where it, um, people who file tax appeals are less likely to win. But um, yeah, that I, I don't. Uh don't quite understand that. That's uh, you know, that's disturbing. Yeah. Um, you know, and even the first part too, because it says that they pay higher than than uh, non uh, minorities. Well, in yeah, but that's you oh. know, if you if you're if you're going nationwide, and this just said that you know the the study was however many uh, 118 million homes across the United States. Well, yeah. you know, there, you know, there's probably, uh, you know, half the half the United States probably um, lives in urban areas where, um, and so that's going to skew, um, you know. Now, if they were if they were talking about, I, I could understand if they were saying in in a geographical location or or major cities in the United States or something like that, but but I can't see, you know. Um, if a white family owns a, a home in, in St. Louis and uh, they sell it and a black family moves in, I suspect they're going to be paying the same tax rate on that. Well, you would hope so, yes. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I wouldn't imagine that it would change. I mean, I, I would hope not. So, yeah. I don't know. Uh, uh, but the protests and things this spring and, uh, you know, we hear about the uh, the sports leagues. Uh, really kind of opening up to the uh, the Black Lives Matter movement and uh, social justice uh, you know, uh, initiatives and things like that. Uh, this report from ESPN USA Today says that the NFL will play the song Lift Every Voice and Sing, yeah. which has been called the Black National Anthem. 
They're going to play that before games during the opening week of the upcoming NFL season. The, that song will be played before the Star Spangled Banner for every week one game and will be televised on the network TV feeds. Uh, the season opens September 10th with Houston and Kansas City. The league is also reportedly looking at other ways to recognize victims of police brutality during this upcoming season, including special decals on helmets and jerseys. Commissioner Roger Goodell, following a request, more likely a demand from players, admitted last month that the league was wrong for not listening to players in the past and encouraged them to peacefully speak out. He said the league condemned racism in the NFL and said the NFL believes that Black Lives Matter. And, of course, there's a reference to uh, Colin Kaepernick and, and what he's been through uh, since he kind of started the, the protest with kneeling during the anthem a few years ago and uh, has not played since in the, uh, in the NFL. So, uh, but anyway, that's, uh, that's something that the, the league is going to be doing this year with the uh, lift every voice and sing before the Star Spangled Banner. And, you know, the, the thing with uh, um, Kaepernick, uh, and, and, you know, we've already established that, you know, I'm not a great uh, a sports fan or anything, but, you know, you read stories that he wasn't that great of a quarterback. I understand he was a good quarterback, but, but um, uh, part, you know, so I think coupled with the fact that he was um, became a lightning rod for people who were not of the same – thought process as him you know and yeah. and the you know the nfl the nfl was worried about losing sponsorship and things like that um um but now how how many years has that been is this three years now that he hasn't played going on four years four years that he hasn't played yeah um so um you know and i and and then i i understand that he kind of messed up you know that he had a thing last year where people were uh, uh, teams were supposed to come look at him or something and well they had yeah and, and there's there's a lot of confusion on really how this all went down uh, he was going to uh, stage a kind of a, a, a like a pro day uh, like college players do he was going to do a workout for any NFL team that wanted to send representatives uh, he was going to do it in Atlanta they were trying to work out details with the league. Uh, Ka Kaepernick's people say the league changed some things at the last minute, which kind of went against what they thought they'd agreed to. Uh, at the last minute, he moved it to a different location. And there weren't, I mean, it was filmed and everything and then sent out to all the teams. Uh, but, it, you know, it, it, never, it never ended up like they had intended it to. And there was, you know, nobody expressed – uh, uh, you know, strong desire to sign him after that. I think part of the thing is, is that a lot of the offensive philosophies across the league have changed. You have more quarterbacks similar to what Kaepernick was when he was playing, which is, you know, the mobility, he could get out and run uh, and, and those sort of things. You're seeing more of those quarterbacks coming in the league, like Patrick Mahomes and Lamar Jackson and, and some others. So, uh, you know, there's a, there's a belief now that his style of play that he had when he was in the league before is more conducive to what offenses are looking to do now. Plus, there's a lot of people who have steadfastly thought that he is probably, uh, could be anyway, better than what a lot of starting quarterbacks in the league are right now. Uh, and there's a lot of people that have had said that then and have really stuck with that, haven't changed their tune. And there have been some people who at the time didn't think his skill set, you know, uh, equated to what teams were looking for then, but offensive philosophies have now changed across the league and more teams are trying to go for that mobile quarterback that can get out and make plays with his feet. Um, you know, more of the short passing game with the, you know, with the occasional uh, long pass downfield and that, more played into his skill set, uh, those type of uh, philosophies, as opposed to what the the general rule of thumb was across the league when he was in before back in 2016. You know, and uh, um, I don't know how to put this without getting into trouble for it, but uh, um, I, I kind of understand. He, 
I, I don't know uh, much about his heritage, but he's half white, isn't he? Uh, yeah, I, so I think so. I wonder he's why these. Uh, and I wonder why they, uh, you know, these people. Um, I, I don't know, you know, what do they choose to identify as? Um, but um, like President Obama, he was not, uh, you know, he was mixed race, and but I guess maybe because of his. Uh, I don't know. Is, is it his coloration? What 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 identified them as as uh, black men? I guess because yeah. um, because even uh, Obama he wasn't really raised in a, a black society, you know. Um, so I always just kind of wonder why. I just wonder why we just can't be people. <laughs> you know, you know? Well, yeah, you know, I think yeah, that would I think that would go a long way to solving a lot of the problems instead of identifying as a a black American, a white American, a, yeah. you know, Mexican American or whatever. We just say, look, we're all Americans. Yep. I think and, that would... and go from there. Uh, I, th I think that would kind of uh, maybe, well, I don't know. Yeah. Hiring across many U.S. industries remains severely bruised by this spring's economic cave-in, but a few sectors are taking tentative steps toward a recovery, according to the latest LinkedIn hiring report, construction saw a particularly strong bounce back in June. I've seen pl houses around here going up. So uh, hiring was up 77% compared to May. Other industries that have seen hiring inch back include uh, legal, hardware and networking, manufacturing, public safety, public administration and education, which are now posting hiring rates of at least 75% of what they were a year ago. Overall, U.S. hiring in June was down a steep 39.6% from last year's levels and essentially unchanged for, for May's lows. Now, I saw the president was uh, um, extolling the, uh, you know, the job numbers and stuff yesterday. And, and, yeah. uh, and, and you know what? First off, uh, a, as things get going again, I, I, I'm not really sure what anybody expected. I, I would expect that the, the numbers to be – you know, he said he expected the numbers to be good, but not as good as they are. And um, but a lot of people, a lot of people who were unemployed are getting their jobs back. And yeah, that's basically what it is. Yeah, a lot of that. You know, so um, I don't know. Uh, but but I, I like to see. You know, um, that's one of the things I always liked about Ronald Reagan was, you know, he would tell people, "This is a great company or company. This is a great country." You're great people. Go out and do great things, you know. And I think that's kind of what uh, Trump, you know, I think he's kind of taking a page out of the uh, of, uh, Reagan book and, and pumping up the economy, you know, by uh, by making people feel good. Well, I think that's what he's trying to do. I'm not sure everybody's buying into it. Um, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know. Some birthdays today. George M. Cohan, the playwright and composer, born 1878. Pete Fountain, the jazz clarinetist in 1930. Kurtwood Smith played Red Foreman on there the set show. Uh, he, uh, let's see, he was born in 43, which would make him 77 today. Michael Cole, the actor from the Mod Squad, is 75. Johnny Lee, the country singer, 74. Uh, humorist Dave Barry is 73. Actress Betty Buckley from Eight is Enough is 73. Jan Smithers from WKRP in Cincinnati. Yeah. Bailey Quarters. Seven, yeah, Bailey Quarters, 71. Uh, talk show host Montel Williams is 64. Pop singer Laura Brannigan. Yeah. Saying Gloria, Gloria, the blues theme song from last year, was born in 52. She passed away. Aaron Tippin, the country music singer and producer, uh, was born in 58. He's 62 years old today. Tom Cruise, 62. Actor Thomas Gibson from Dharma and Greg is, is 58. That is, Tom Cruise is 58. Hunter Tylo, the actress from The Bold and the Beautiful, is 58. Yardley Smith, the actress from The Simpsons, is 56. Uh, let's see. WikiLeaks founder uh, Julian Assange is 49. Actor Patrick Wilson from The A-Team and Others is 47. And actress Olivia Munn is 40 years old today. Gary Johanning, Mike Hoffman, Abby Klontz, Ray Schoenveld, Sandy Stegman, David Saltzman, and Becky Lawrence all have birthdays today. Tomorrow, Henry Harms, and on Sunday, Julie Landwehr, Jackie Thompson, Doyle Stack, Heather Bouse, Ethan Sellers, and Chad Leake. And happy anniversary to, to uh, Dean and Mike Hollis today. It's their 73rd. Thanks, Bob. 
Thank you, Sam. It's 9 o'clock. We are KTUI. Mr. Barnes. Still higher than historically average, the unemployment rate in America fell to 11.1% based on the report released by the Labor Department yesterday. It was 13.3% in May. President Trump commenting on yesterday's report from the Labor Department while speaking at a Spirit of America business event at the White House. The United States economy has added almost 5 million new jobs in the month of June. That's shattering all expectations and shattering all records. The U.S. Supreme Court is delaying a ruling on releasing grand jury testimony from the Mueller Russia investigation. The court yesterday blocking a request from the White House to see grand jury documents from the former special counsel's Russia investigation. And this is USA Radio News. Balance of nature, changing the world one life at a time. I haven't got a cold in two and a half years. My wife can't argue with my track record because she's seen me not get sick. My daughter got sick over Christmas. My wife got it about three days after she left. I went through both of them, didn't get sick. I tell people I like to think my immune system is armored up and I'm able to repel these simple, stupid colds. And if it isn't that, then what is it? Because I'd get at least a couple colds a year. And what has changed in the last two and a half years? The only thing I can think of is I'm taking uh, my fruits and vegetables, you know, the balance of nature. Experience the balance of nature difference for yourself. Right now, Balance of Nature is offering free shipping and 35% off on any new preferred order. Start your journey to better health today by calling 1-800-2468-751 or by going to balanceofnature.com. And make sure to receive this special radio offer by using discount code USA. The U.S. recorded over 52,000 new cases of COVID-19 as of yesterday. It was the largest single-day total since the pandemic began six months ago, surpassing Wednesday's total of over 50,000 new cases. The coronavirus has been spiking across many states. A new record was set yesterday in Florida, where over 10,000 new cases of coronavirus were reported. Jeffrey Epstein's former girlfriend is facing charges for allegedly helping him sexually abuse girls. Act uh, acting U.S. Secretary Audrey Strauss claiming that Galen Maxwell helped Epstein recruit and groom girls for sexual abuse. Maxwell was arrested yesterday morning in New Hampshire without incident. She's pleaded not guilty to four charges of sexual abuse of minors and two counts of perjury. Find us online anytime or at usaradio.com. Are you tired of high cable TV rates? Sign up for Dish today and get a $500 bonus offer while supplies last. Plus, lock in your price for two years guaranteed. Call All-American Dish, your Dish authorized retailer now. 800-610-5739. 800-610-5739. That's 800-610-5739. Offers require credit qualification, 24-month commitment, early termination fee, Eddie auto pay. Restrictions apply. Call for details. A Boston suburb believed to be the first city in America to legally recognize multiple partner relationships. The Somerville City Council adopting a domestic partnership policy last week that includes polymery. According to Psychology Today, polymery is the practice of having multiple intimate relationships with the full knowledge and acceptance of everyone involved. Somerville's law now defines a domestic partnership as an uh, identity uh, or an entity, rather, formed by people instead of an entity formed by two people. It seems there's a lot less traffic in brick-and-mortar stores across America lately. Here's more from USA Radio's John Hunt. Cell phone data that tracks users' whereabouts show that fewer Americans are patronizing local businesses and chain stores as COVID-19 cases surge in states like Arizona, California, and Florida. Traffic at retail and food establishments ticked upwards for most of April and May as businesses reopen, but has started to drop again since mid-June, marking one of the first periods of deceleration since city and state lockdowns began. This is USA Radio News. And Hamilton is streaming on Disney Plus, beginning today. The award-winning Broadway musical starring Lin-Manuel Miranda as Alexander Hamilton was filmed in 2016 at the Richard Rogers Theater in New York City. Find us online at usaradio.com. For USA Radio News, I'm Chris Barnes. 
from the KTUI Weatherbug Weather Center for this Friday morning. A mix of sun and clouds. The afternoon high rising to a warm 85 with a 30% chance of showers and midday thunderstorms. Tonight, partly cloudy and dry. Low upper 60s with a light and variable wind. For tomorrow, the 4th of July, a mostly sunny sky. A Saturday high of 89. Clear for Saturday night. Low back to 67. Sunny Sunday. Highs threatening 90. For KTUI, I'm TJ Matthews. All right, TJ, 79 degrees already at the studios of KTUI. It's five and a half past nine o'clock. Time for the for sale show. If you've got something to buy, sell, or trade, you can give me a call here, 468-5101, and uh, I will put you directly on the air when I answer the phone because uh, um, there's nobody else here uh, this morning, but 468-5101 uh, uh, is the number. I've got somebody that wants a doghouse, a uh, medium-sized doghouse. Actually, they have wanted a couple, I think. So if you build doghouses or you've got one that – um, you would part with 573-457-8505, 573-457-8505. Got a lady in the Owensville area that's looking for a screen door for her house trailer, uh, 573-437-4804, 573-437-4804. And I got a lady that's uh, got a 14-foot stock or horse trailer for sale. It's in good shape. She's asking $900 for it, 636 Seven four four six seven two nine or five seven three nine two seven five three three six. This sounds like a home number here. Nine two seven five three three six. Cell number seven or six three six seven four four six seven two nine. That's my list of items for the for sale show for today, folks. I'm going to let you listen to this from the folks at Jerry's TV. Then I'm going to wind things up. All right, it's uh, seven minutes past nine o'clock. Jerry's TV in Sullivan is a family-owned appliance, furniture, mattress, and electronics store. Jerry's has over 20,000 square feet of showroom with name brands of fine quality home furnishings at low prices. Jerry's TV has been serving the Sullivan and surrounding area since 1962. Jerry's has in-store financing, fast, free delivery, free setup, and free removal. When you shop at Jerry's, you get discount store prices with service in every department. Shop local. Shop Jerry's TV, 375 West Springfield. And Sullivan because service matters. And uh, I'm not kidding there. Uh, I, I bought a Serta Eye Comfort mattress the other day from uh, Jerry's and uh, great, great uh, mattress. I love it. Um, let's see. Uh, birthdays today. Gary Johanning lives across the street from me. Uh, president of the Sullivan Bank, Mike Hoffman, Abby Klontz, Ray Soonveld, Sandy Stegman, David Saltzman. Uh, Becky Lawrence, and uh, that's all the birthdays that I have today. Tomorrow, Henry Harms. On Sunday, uh, Julie Landwehr, Jackie Thompson, Doyle Stack, Heather Bouse, Ethan Sellers, Chad Leak, and happy anniversary today to Dean and Mike Hollis. They're celebrating their 73rd. Don't forget the uh, Cuban Knights of Columbus. Uh, they're having their annual 4th of July barbecue at Mesa's parking lot in Cuba, and uh, that's today and tomorrow from uh, 10 a.m. till 6 p.m. All right. So uh, I really hope that you and yours uh, have a safe and happy 4th of July. Please uh, be careful if you're out on the roads. They're going to be busy this weekend. And uh, uh, don't drink and drive. Um, uh, don't boat and drive. All right. <laughs> be careful out on the waterways, too. All right. Um, so say a prayer for the leadership of this country. Um, for the uh, men and women who protect this nation, our first responders, all the folks that work in the hospitals and the nursing homes, uh, doctors and nurses and all the staff, um, try to find a blood drive somewhere. The Red Cross really, really in need of blood, and uh, especially type O. And uh, that's it. I'll be back with you. Uh, I'm going to come in and do some news tomorrow, but I'll be back with you here on the air at uh, 6 a.m. on Monday morning. So, again, have a safe and happy 4th. 9 past 9 o'clock, 79 degrees here at the studios of KTUI. To hear the governor of New York, who made some terrible, terrible decisions, I'm sure he made good ones too, but I don't know that Andrew Cuomo will ever get out from under the, the horror.